Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Zephcast, the show where we get to know your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters alike. I am your host, Zephyrs XP, and with me today are my two awesome friends. We got A1 twins in the house, David and Kyle. How you guys doing today? Fantastic. Thank you for having us. How you doing, everybody? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having us, man. Dude, thank you guys seriously so much for your time, for being here. It really, really means a lot to me. I'm super excited to see where our conversation goes, getting to know a little bit more about you, a little bit more about your streaming journey, kind of behind the scenes. Um, but first question, right off the bat, this one's always everyone's favorite question. Um, Icebreaker, if you both had your own late night talk show, who would be the first celebrity you'd invite as your guest? Ryan Reynolds. Dang it, you took my answer. I was gonna ask so if I could fast. go first just so I could do that. Ryan Reynolds and it'd get weird happily. <laughs> Didn't even have to think about it. It was just right there. Okay, okay, yep. okay. I'm gonna one up that one and it's kind of cheating. Ryan Reynolds with Blake Lively. Ooh. Let's get the power couple. Let's get them both that's up there. Okay, that's right there. Cause they're a fun group. So yeah, why, fair. why Ryan Reynolds? Why so, not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, so the the long running joke is, and actually, I was just uh, in Shadows Discord talking about this. Funny enough, uh, Ryan Reynolds has been like my secret man crush since I first saw Van Wilder years ago. It's one of those I'm like, I, I don't know. Just to me, he is like the prime example of like peak everything. Hilarious, charitable, good looking. You know. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good looking guy. I and, mean, he does a badass yeah. Deadpool. Yeah, he's exactly. been in both Marvel and he won't admit it anymore, DC. Mm. Like he's got, <laughs> and he was also in Blade. I can't remember what comic uh, publisher that one is, but he, all three, he's covered. He was Blade in DC. Blade. He was in Blade, right? Blade which, Trinity. Which one? Yep. The third one? Third yeah, one. The third one. Yep. Holy crap. And I totally one nobody wants to talk about that one. <laughs> I uh, totally forgot about that movie. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say after Ryan Reynolds, that's when I'd get into like the Anna de Armas, uh, Aubrey Plaza, Anna Kendrick. <laughs> Anna Tre Kendrick's pretty cute. Yeah. She's <laughs> also funny. She is also very funny. She's also very funny. Um, I don't know the other two right off the top of my head, but I do know, it wasn't Anna Kendrick. She was in, um, what was the dancing? Oh, what was the movie? Oh no. Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect, that one. That she was, was Pitch Perfect. That was such a I, great I haven't movie. seen. I haven't seen Pitch Perfect. For her, I, my first thought is uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. <gasps> yes, yes, <laughs> dude, that is such a good movie. That's like a classic oh, forever great movie. Great movie. The music in mm -hmm. it, dude. Oh, and oh. Uh, Michael Cena, he plays he plays Scott, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Sarah. Michael Sa Sarah. 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 Yeah. Cena. <laughs> John oh, Cena. John Cena. Picture the fusion between the two of them. You know, John Cena's <laughs> massive head on a small body, or vice versa. Rocking the bass, of course. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just picturing Michael Sarah like as meek as he is, but with like John Cena's body. I, I don't know, man. I guess we should go out. You can't see me. <laughs> you can't see. God. What's crazy? I gained a newfound respect for Michael Sarah after seeing his interview on Hot Ones. One of the few people cleaned all 10 wings without even a bead of sweat going down. Just like, yeah, this was fine. This was cool. This was a fun time. I was like, nope. <laughs> Would oh, either of heart. you guys ever be on Hot Ones if given the opportunity? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Hell yeah. Send me out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hell you guys right usually up. eat like like the caliente peppers and stuff, right? Yeah, my brother more than I do, that's for sure. But I've had so, my fair share of insane spiciness. The, the reason why I'm more comfortable with spice now is because... Uh, and I already warned you, I'm going to like circle everything back to firefighting somehow. <laughs> so I, I warned you before. So at the fire station, at least the department I work at, every single meal we make has something spicy in it. Um, and because New Mexico is the only state with a state question, I don't know if you knew that. Dave, no. you know the question? Yep. Red or green? Red or green. Red because green. we serve red and green chili with everything. Mm -hmm. And in turn... When we cook meals at the fire station, there's usually red or green chili. Or both. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And one of my lieutenants uh, has his own ranch, grows his own chili. We call it Rancho Fuego, and it's hot, hot, hot. <laughs> oh my God, I want to die, but it's so good hot. So, kind of a fun little fact, too, about the uh, 
the hot ones thing my brother and i did a mini donation drive a couple of years ago where we were doing our own little version of hot ones where we had 10 spicy wings progressively getting hotter the oh. the first seven were honestly like negligible you could have mixed and matched them they mm -hmm. didn't taste much different heat wise for us the last three though oh cool. man murder in my mouth uh and that was to raise money to get uh get me to fly out to a, a smash bros tournament in california which ended up making it we won or if we didn't win we made it <laughs> went yeah we won no <laughs> ignore one! that medal back there i did not earn that um truthfully uh mine's like was the, and because we hit that goal we also did the one chip challenge i don't know if you're familiar yes. with it i was gonna yeah. ask about that yeah Oh, we <laughs> still have one of those twice now, and it will take a miracle to get me to do a third or an insane donation. This last That's where you guys use the so gloves, bad. right? You guys use the yes. gloves for it. You oh, need absolutely. the gloves. Uh, it comes in a little mini coffin with instructions and warnings as to like, don't touch your eyes. Don't do this. We are not liable if you have a heart attack from eating this. Oh my God. And please record it and put it online. <laughs> It actually encourages it with a. It tells you the hashtag to use. Enjoy the pain, right? Pretty, and Pretty it, much. It um, oh. I actually, I think I have that exact same item, like in my Amazon cart, just waiting for it to come back in stock to order it. But I was like, <laughs> nice. is that the exact same one they used? Was it, it was like forty-ish bucks? That's, yeah, about. So my mine, I got chip? them on sale, which is why I ordered an extra one, <laughs> which is like my in case of emergency. The original goal of it, I was like, I'm going to take this to work. We're going to get an arrogant rookie to come in. Oh, that no. says he can handle. But then I realized how bad it would be to eat that chip and then immediately run calls. Right. And I, on fire. That would be terrible. I had to have like <laughs> a Pepto Bismol cocktail afterwards with a. Uh, like some numbing cream in there, just oh, all kinds God. of stuff to. It was that it bad. Was, it was brutal. The, well, that that oh. the second the second uh, time we did it, I was also doing like shots of hot sauce that day while raising money, because that's when we were raising money for suicide prevention. So yeah, I was like, the second one was charity. First one was charity for me. The other one was actually legitimate charity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that was a bad day. That was. One of the only times I stepped away from the stream, I was like, David, I'm going to need like 30 minutes. Just, <laughs> yeah. I need to go <laughs> over <like>, ride. <sighs> the other ones you've done is like the, is it the bean boozled ones? The jelly yeah. beans? Bean boozled. Oh God. These ones? <laughs> Those ones, yeah. The Carolina Reaper. Oh, oh. David, he's still there. Ah, we lost a twin. David. I thought it was. Oh, oh there, there it is. is. Okay. Hi, David. I was like, okay, you both cut out for me, so I'm you guessing froze. something on my end. Okay, like, at least it was a great smile. <laughs> yeah. Oh the... God, I, I, I hate to, to segue, but just real quick. No, you're good. Um, because our internet uh, in the city I live in has been going down a lot for everybody who has this particular internet. Mm. And the first time it happened, I was playing Resident Evil, just got jump scared, so bad. Resident Evil One. I think and I did this sent exact... me the clip. <laughs> yeah, it was just like this, and then it froze, and that became a meme in our Discord. Is David really keeping still, or is he frozen again? I think it might be frozen again. Oh, slightly. Ah! So we're coming back. I'm like, what the <laughs> heck happened? Again? So we're talking my about internet... freezing screens, and it keeps happening to you. That yeah, or I know like that's weird because my internet's been freaking rock solid for like ever now, and all of a sudden, right now, it's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep oh, an eye on it. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all good. It, as long as I'm, as long as one of us are here, it's all good. Exactly. But yeah, be, I was oh, gonna say, be, that has the spinny boozled. thing, right? This yeah. this one has a spinny thing, and so anytime I'm doing, it's always like when I'm doing marbles commentary. Yeah. Like this one's habanero. Habanero is not bad. Yeah, habanero is not too bad. What's the habaneros hottest, are amazing. What's the hottest one? Is it the Caliente? Carolina Reaper. The Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper. It's got habanero, cayenne, sriracha, jalapeno, which is just gross. Carolina Reaper. I just had a habanero, which is the second hottest. Do they like taste good? Nope. Nope. They just taste <laughs> like death. <laughs> yeah. Yep. If you ever had those uh, those Harry Potter ones, that's like every flavored one. It's kind of like that. If you were to grab a handful and pop them at once, oh, it's God. about the same flavor, just I, with heat added. I've seen people on Twitch do those as either like like I don't know hype train things or like channel point mm -hmm. things and someone some that people have done have been like soap water and dishwater and mm -hmm. ear wax and i had an ear wax once 
Yeah, oh there's God. some bad ones out there. Uh, same with just the classic Bean Boozled where they'll have uh, two flavors that are the exact same color and design, yes. so you can't tell them apart. But like one's strawberry banana smoothie, gym socks. And you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> well, so <clears throat> Dave, when we used to play that, mm -hmm. it was like the first some ridiculous amount of time like four or five times we played it having like three beans each time i only got the good beans yeah. so when people were like dramatic i'm like this ain't I too think bad I'm, i was like yeah. i might have gotten the bad one this tastes like cotton candy that's a little stale <laughs> i don't know and then i got it was like rotten fish oh god and then i understood <laughs> i was just like ah ha ha whatever you don't know my luck <laughs> <laughs> just that sheer like that sheer agony of like oh now i get it that's what now he i knew. understand he messed up <laughs> at the exact i was just gonna say that exactly exactly <laughs> um so i guess kind of like segue off that one a little bit um, New topic. <laughs> one so one question um just like a huge part of the podcast that i love asking everybody is just yeah. kind of a little bit more personal is like who are a1 twins the streamers and even the people behind the streamers if you kind of want to talk a little bit about yourself the channel where the streaming kind of start the whole kind of journey if you kind of want to dive of, into that of course of course uh so anyone who watches us the a1 twins is truthfully just twin a like being hercules and just pulling the stream carrying it on his back doing everything and then me just kind of right in the background, like, I'm here too. Thank you for the support. Love you. Pokemon Nuzlocke, though. Brother. Dude, Pokemon Nuzlocke. Yes. <laughs> Dude, those Nuzlocke are hard. <laughs> I've got, actually, I've got an idea for you that I just saw, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, no, but, but truthfully, uh, streaming, we've been doing this two, two and a half years now going, mm -hmm. and we had friends asking us for years and years to do it and we just kept putting off like ah i don't know we want to but don't uh, have a good don't computer know. don't have a good computer and then finally uh we're like you know what sure I, why not I, let's do it i can tell you the exact moment that it was like all right we're doing this so uh our friend light az light who's always in our yeah. chat <laughs> he's one of the people that just kept pushing do it do it do it do it were you guys in and someone that, else's channel originally? No. No, we, this was in person. He was telling oh, us like, yeah, like he's actually, he's one of our best friends. Like we, yeah. we hang out with him often. Like we've known him yeah. for, I just saw him years. 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, nice. Like Shout in person. Out. <laughs> Shout <Yeah>. out. <laughs> so yeah, he kept telling me like, he just kept bringing it up and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. And then at the time at work, I was on injury duty because I messed up my shoulder and one of the guys that I work with, who's also a longtime friend and video gamer, he was streaming at the time. He had like just started, was having good early success with it. And he finally told me, he's like, why just go stream? I don't have a good enough computer. Go buy a good enough computer. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> hit up a the best with that friends. Logic. Those are the best yeah. friends who are like, I right. really want to do something. Then just do it. Exactly. Right? And uh it that first year, I know we said two and a half years, that first year I'm considering a wash. Like it was like, we might've streamed once every couple weeks. It was for mm. a couple hours, inconsistent. Yeah. Didn't know what we were doing. Just we had a bad. cheap camera that was yeah. our, also our microphone. Yeah, mm. like uh, my wife had an old work web camera that was ancient and she wasn't using it anymore. And so she's like, well, you, if you guys want a webcam, so here you like here's this one and so we used that one for a while and i was happy that we had a webcam but mm -hmm. looking back on it the quality i'm like it was, and that's yep. what actually blows my mind is that like the first few streams we didn't know how to change the bit rate so it was laggy yeah. and it kept dropping yeah we didn't know lighting we didn't have a good layout we like that first year we danced around with so many things and then finally <laughs> and also, i was gonna oh, say God. one funny thing about it too is we don't live together <laughs> Clearly, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. We still only had the one streaming computer, <laughs> and oh so that God. computer literally would get boxed up, monitor, mouse, keyboard, oh, yes. camera, microphone, and literally bounced between the two houses. <laughs> and we live like 10, 15 minutes away from each other. 
And so we're like, okay, you know, yeah. And so at my house, I didn't really have a set office or room to put it. <laughs> so it'd be like in my living room and then all of a sudden facing towards my kitchen, then the next stream facing towards my backyard. And <laughs> gotcha, just gotcha. No consistency. <laughs> I, I remember so too, the, the first like, it happened like every stream for the first couple months. I'd take over my PS4, I'd bring the computer and I'd forget the power cord. Oh no. Yeah. And then the next time I forgot the power cord to the monitor. Oh, no. And then the PS4 controller. So I'd like, we'd be like, all right guys, we're going live this time. I showed up, we're getting set up. And it's like, oh no. crap. And I've got a 30 minute round trip to go grab the thing I forgot, <laughs> right? Sorry guys, we're getting started soon. <laughs> yeah, starting a little bit late, but it's funny too, because we had so much random success in that first year of people who just were like, I feel pity for these guys. I like these guys. They're like, <laughs> they're trying their best and they still come around nowadays. I have like, I wouldn't you. have stuck around. <laughs> I honestly, I would have. I'm it was full, bad. Full disclosure. It, was, it was rough. I'm sorry. I, I love all of you who actually showed up and still come by. <laughs> Thank you. I, I yeah. see the, I see the founders badges pop up. I'm like, Oh, Ooh, I'm sorry. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Why? Oh, well, like it's crazy. Like, <laughs> is uh, oh, sorry. My brother and I, we did competitive, uh, smash Bros. melee for many, many years since like 2006, 2007. And so there's a lot of very well-known, very respected streamers who come from that side. And so some of them would rate us. And looking back at it, I'm like, oh, why did they raid us? Why didn't they wait like a year and a half? And, <laughs> and, I mean, and, and these so these are baby raids too. Like no, no, I think no, our no. biggest raid was like almost Armada. a thousand people. It was over. I yeah. decided I would randomly stream like Mario Kart, uh, Super Mario Kart, Super Nintendo Classic one. I'm like, sure, whatever. And uh, oh, Armada, so UGS bad. Armada, shout out to him. He is one of the Alliance. greatest Smash players of all time. Shout out to Alliance. <laughs> He decided to raid me with like 1,100 people, and I'm like, nobody oh. wants to watch me play Mario Kart, so I, I swapped it to just chatting, and I was talking with them about Smash Bros. And then I went back and watched the VOD, and the microphone sounded like I had aluminum foil being crushed oh, next to no. it. They, the, it was like the camera couldn't focus on me, and I'm just over here like, this is the happiest day of my life. And now I'm like, oh my God, that was the worst moment of my life. Well, it happened there. <laughs> no. It's like, now bring me your, yeah. bring me and those to, juicy raids. To be fair, love to, you know, Armada, to Axe, everybody who's raided us, because a lot of them still raid us to this day and still support Ginger, our channel. Ginger, so, Ginger as well is a huge one in the Smash scene. So it, we got very fortunate to have those connections to really help give us kind of a boost early on uh just a bit and so I, i'm still so happy i'm like oh wow how did we survive that first year you know what's so yeah. funny is i feel like a lot of people i've talked to have like had <laughs> similar experiences where their first you know couple streams or their first few weeks or few months like they really struggled <laughs> with getting obs and their console and their <laughs> computer and everything oh. working and that's not even <laughs> factoring into anything social media related or factoring into networking yeah. or like learning <laughs> twitch so it's almost like yeah. there's i've always felt like there's like ceilings like with success yes. is like you know people mm -hmm. will try it out they'll have laggy streams they'll be like this sucks this isn't a thing and then they quit mm -hmm. and then those people yeah. don't move on to like the next ceiling so that's awesome mm -hmm. like obviously i'm so happy you guys kept doing it but like <laughs> yeah you, buddy it, that, it's crazy though like you have to be and this isn't just for streaming this is for anything in life you have to be willing to fail you have to yes. be willing to go through those growing pains yes. you've got to be willing to say hey this might not work but i am going to try and actually put in a good effort into it in our case our good effort didn't come into like eight nine months into it but still we we yeah. started that at some that, point i was gonna say i consider our stream really starting like early 2020 that's when i was like okay streaming as consistently as i can <laughs> up the quality i uh, yep. really reach out um and so going back to what my brother was saying everybody knows i'm like a huge nerd when it comes like motivational quotes motivational speeches and <laughs> uh what what you said reminded me of one and it was that if you want something bad enough you'll find a way if you don't you'll find an excuse true Ooh, i like so. that yeah. I actually, oh, um, we've got tons. <laughs> you're, uh, I think on your Twitter, Kyle, a couple days ago, you posted something that was, um, like a lot of people just see 
you know, mm. the the star on the court or the basketball player or whatever, but they mm -hmm. don't see all yeah, the yeah. hours of dedication put behind the scenes for it. Mm -hmm. And that's so yeah. entirely when, true. When the cameras aren't, aren't around, when the fans aren't watching, it's all about the work you put in. Yep. Then that's what like that's pushes what you to stardom. It's funny. I was talking about that literally just this last Wednesday on stream too. Like I was swapping in between games and then caught, caught up just chatting for almost an hour. We were talking Hell about yeah. those things. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, nothing at all. And uh, that's something I was talking about. Um, like how uh, uh, I believe they actually, I misquoted it. They said it was Muhammad Ali who said, uh, I don't count the number of sit-ups I do. Yeah. Uh, it's when it starts hurting. I count those because those mm -hmm. are the only ones that matter. And it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. you've got to put in that effort. And that's in everything you do in life you gotta if you want it to be successful you have to be willing to put in the work there's just no shortcut around that have to yep, a thousand percent you know and i think and a lot of you. people like, i think a lot of people look at you know even like failure is like a negative thing and it's not it's like i, mm -hmm. I had this conversation i think with zach or or maybe it was fortune but it was like like failure isn't bad it's just failure and success isn't mm -hmm. great it's just success you know and you yeah. can learn great things and bad things from failure and you can learn great <laughs> things and bad things from success so as long mm -hmm. as you like fail and you ask yourself what could i have done better to not have the same outcome in the future then that's not a wasted experience <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna throw another one out i can't help this one do it uh, i i don't know who originally said this quote but it it is i never lose I either win or I learn, yep. but I don't lose. I uh, love that one. That's a grown. Uh, so I actually, I want to point out just two things that uh, Zeph, you reminded me of. Um, one is of all things, Mighty Ducks 3, yep. where one of their <laughs> first, uh, their first games they play, they're crushing their opponents at the beginning. And then they start like the other team starts bringing it back and it ends with a tie. And uh, the like Dean says, oh man, they, you know, they only tied, they should have won. And the coach actually said, I wish they would have lost. What? Yeah, they would have, they would have learned more from a loss. You know, it would have been better for them to lose and learn from that. And the other one is actually uh, going back to Smash. There's a phenomenal, phenomenal player. One of the five gods of Melee, PPMD, who is a uh, good friend, a dear friend of ours and an amazing streamer as well. But before streaming was even considered, uh, we were at a tournament called Pound Four. This is in 2010, if I recall correctly. Uh, and my brother had just lost a really gut-wrenching set. I can't remember if that knocked him in, uh, out of the tournament or not, but it that was, was out it was of just, the tournament. That it was, was out of the tournament. It was a painful one. And we were just talking. And so here's, we're talking with a guy who's one of the favorites to actually win the whole event. And we're just hanging out. And my brother, of course, is a little beat up and a little upset about that. And PPMD actually looked at him and said, do you know what you did wrong? And he wasn't saying it in like a malicious way or looking down. He was just asking a legitimate question. Do you know what you did wrong? My Rosal, well, yeah, I kept doing this and I probably could have done that. And I, I overcommitted here. I, yeah, and I did the, yeah. Was all, well, now you know. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Just that one sentence to me <laughs> changed my outlook on life. And yeah. he didn't oh, yeah. even realize it. Oh no, I've I've carried that thought mm -hmm. with me through everything. Uh like the current job I'm in, streaming, anything competitive mm -hmm. I do. Like it's always just like, okay, what did I do wrong? How can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that mindset. Oh yeah. It's a I huge think, thing. I think people, we as humans tend to like beat ourselves up too much. You know, we are our own worst critics. Yeah. And so again like you can you can learn from a loss or you can spend you can waste all that time in your own little pity party when you really shouldn't that's a chance for growth that's a chance for like self like what would it be inflection inward reflection Just reflection sorry thank you like, no you're good self-reflection thank you we and complete yeah, each so other <laughs> we complete each other's you know i'm not going to go to <laughs> what i want to say uh, but but yeah it's like that one phrase completely turned my mindset around on everything. So now it's like when I go back into the gym and I'm not putting up as much weight as I used to be able to, it's like, it's okay. Here's why. And here's why I need to do to improve it. Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I love the idea of learning from a loss. I completely agree. I do. I think, <laughs> I think for a lot of people, there's gotta be those moments in life where they just something just, it could be a conversation with a random person, just something happens in their life that they're like, 
that was a, a light bulb changing moment for me of, you know, <laughs> inflection or, or reflecting on myself or just kind of having that light bulb click. And I think for some people, maybe it never clicks. Um, True. And then for some people, it clicks really early. For some people, it clicks really mm -hmm. later. I know um, a big thing for me was when I was in high school, I had a, I had a geography teacher and he was like, he was only like 10 years older than us. So we could all kind of relate to him a little bit mm -hmm. more than, you know, teachers like 40 years older than us yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was hip with the cool kids in some kind of fashion. <laughs> but I, I'm, Gnarly, bro. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> um, but I remember he was talking one day about just the word ownership and just taking ownership mm -hmm. for anything that happens yes. in life. And that was mm -hmm. a moment even, you know, I like reflected on it a few years ago, like anything that's happened in my life, good, bad, even stuff like it feels like is completely outside of my control. If you just like take ownership for everything, like mm -hmm. everything that happens is my fault, good, bad stuff that <laughs> seems like I can't even control. It's still mm -hmm. my ownership. That was like a big life changing moment for me. And that was like a light yeah. bulb. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to look at life a little bit differently after that. Yeah, so, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, I had a lot of moments just this last week with my work where I was going through uh, interviews with people much higher up the corporate ladder than I am. And uh, that was actually something that I brought up was in my eyes, there's certain points of maturity in life where you realize something and you truthfully accept it. Uh, that is one of them. Ownership, being able to own something. Another one is being able to admit fault, say I did yes. something wrong. And another big one is actually being willing to say, I don't know. I yes. don't understand. Like, not just to throw guesses out there to look at a moment and don't be like, don't stammer and say, oh, uh, especially if they think that you should or they believe you should. And that happens, of course, a lot more in you know the career side of things. But just saying, you know what? I don't know. Let me find out. And the saddest part for me was when I realized those things, I also realized there are people who are 80, 90 years old who never matured they never yes. hit that moment where they refuse to accept ownership to take responsibility to admit that they were wrong about something to mm -hmm. say they don't know you know and it's okay it's okay to not know something that's been yep. something like growing through my 20s now like <laughs> beginning of my 20s compared to the latter part of my 20s now i'm realizing mm -hmm. is like you know in your early 20s you're just like why don't so many more people do the right thing why don't so many more people just like mm -hmm. be a good person or just like have a good heart and just kind of do things mm -hmm. like take ownership mm -hmm. for their own self-being and everything mm -hmm. and just as i'm getting later in my 20s i'm like you know i just think some people just won't ever get there unfortunately you hope everyone wants to you, you yeah. hope everybody kind of <sighs> reaches those levels of maturity but just the reality is the reality and you know that's true yeah There's something i, I Oh God, oh. I was going to say, that realization really hit me when I started uh, treating people on a medical scale. So I've worked in food, I've worked in banking, and now I work in EMS. So I've handled people's, like, their food, their money, and their health. The three things people care about the most. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I realized through all three, slowly but surely, and now especially, like, how often I'd go to somebody who's... 400 plus pounds, habitual smoker, now in their later years, and just a laundry list of medical problems, but it's not their fault. And it's like, you've at some point you have to take ownership of what you've done, what you do. Be like, okay, I might've messed up somewhere on the way and that's fine. It's okay. That's how you grow. Uh, what's that? I think it's a Chinese proverb. Uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Yes. You know, just yep. it's true. You know, you I was also thinking. Go I was also thinking of. Uh, I guess this is a little more to the last thing we were saying. Life is 10 percent what happens to you and 90 percent of how you react to it. <laughs> I love that one. I love that. I'm loving uh, all of these <laughs> quotes. I'm gonna like write them all down. <laughs> Do you know what's sad though? And this happens to me all the time on stream. There's a redemption for a fun quote, or it might be just a wheel spin. Yeah, it's wheel spin. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm on the spot. It's like, give us a fun quote. I'm like, I'm just vapor locked. I, I can't yeah. think just uh, at, in the fire station. We call it buffering. Like yeah. somebody can't think. So it's like, he's buffering. The dot above the head, yes. The, the little loading screen on YouTube. Exactly. It's like, yeah. 
You know, what's funny is that happens at my work is uh, I'll be, since I work in banking still, I'll be setting up something for a customer and my computer will literally have that loading circle, the same one on YouTube when it's trying to buffer. And I'll tell the customers, I'm like, yeah, we'll continue. I'm just waiting for my computer to stop this little circle that's been in the middle. And they'll laugh and then I'll turn and be like, no, I seriously, yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, I know we don't have top, top, top grade stuff here. No, it's okay. <laughs> Not like my computer at home. I could bring that to work. I get everything done in a heartbeat. Uh, something else I wanted to mention though, and this is kind of circling back a little bit, but Zeph's amazing. I actually, yeah, well, actually it is about Zeph, funny <laughs> enough. You guys. I was, uh, no, it's, it's honest, got true. Uh, something I was talking about, and I was actually funny enough talking with my wife about you, Zeph, regarding this, is I understand how you recently decided to try a full-time streaming, full-time content creator. You made that that leap and I am proud for you and I want nothing but success for you. Uh, and something that it made me think about and it was the reason I was talking with her is uh, a good friend of ours, friend of the stream, Wobbles, uh, met him through Smash Bros as well. Brilliant, brilliant guy. If you get to talk to him for even five minutes, you will just be absolutely mesmerized by what he has to say. And he used to write a, a blog called uh, Compete Complete. And it was a blog about gaming and advancing yourself mentally and how to, you know, put yourself in that. Cause he's been through every situation of absolute rage versus absolute like serenity. But I remember there was one that he wrote about uh, peaks and valleys. And you know, there, you can read stories about this everywhere, but he was putting it, comparing it to a lot of people in the competitive gaming scene where you can get to your absolute peak with he was talking about specifically uh, a video game character competitive character right here but you have the potential to go higher but what you have to do is when you're climbing that mountain and you hit that peak in order to get to a higher point you have to go back down hit that valley get to a low point and then be willing to climb back up and there's a lot of people who don't want to get worse in order to get better they don't want to set themselves how many people might say set it pulling themselves back for the opportunity for greater things. And truthfully, I have nothing but respect for you because you decide you're like, you know what? I might take a step back. I, I don't know what your financial life is like, but I'm assuming you took a step back by leaving the, you know, the corporate working world to go streaming full time. But the possibilities for you now are endless and not just monetary wise, but happiness wise, freedom wise. Like you've got yeah. so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the peak that is in front of you, the mountain that you are staring at that you can climb is I guarantee higher than anything you've ever had in your life. And I'm so excited for you. I choose to am. I'm happy to be along for the ride. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm, I'm there with, do it. I'm sitting there with my little founder's badge, like, ha ha, I got one. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> Take that nerds. So um, I, could, I, I hate I, to do I this, but do I'm, go for I'm, it. I'm gonna make it the theme, I guess. I thought the theme would be, <laughs> here's why firefighting. No, it's gonna be motivational quotes. This one comes from Obi-Wan yep. Kenobi. Sometimes you have to take a couple steps back to make a giant leap forward. It's true. Like I, I, I like I'll full it. disclosure, I, <laughs> I would love to go streaming full time. I flat out said if our stream ever just blew up where it just popped working off. On and it. It, yeah, and it, we're working on it. He's working on it. You know, we're working on it. I don't know what way my camera's face down here, so I hope <laughs> I'm pointing at him. Um, <laughs> I might be pointing. Zeph's working on it. No, no. Uh, Together, all of us. I, like, yep. <laughs> they're working on it. You know, whatever. Uh, but. I was actually talking again with my wife about that, of how she would feel if I, truthfully, if I went full-time streaming and she smiled and, you know, she, you know, she would support me, but let's be honest, we have a 12 month old son. Diapers are expensive. There's not a chance we are financially at a point that I could do that. So unless we hit like 2000 subscribers, something like that consistently, then, you know, then by working world i'm doing this <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i have nothing but love and respect for you and i'm so excited because ever since you made that jump it's i can't put i can't pinpoint exactly what it is but everything about your stream your online presence rose up to another level and it you were already brighter. really high up exactly brighter even more it, optimistic do you, know, do you know what it reminds me of is the movie limitless where he Good takes call. the pill to, you know, get oh, Bradley Cooper. Um, yeah. Bradley Cooper, unlock his brain, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But like when he takes the pill, everything around him gets brighter mm -hmm. and everything just seems optimistic. And since you've made this leap, I don't know, like I've always loved hopping new streams. You know, you're one of my favorite streamers, but mm -hmm. it seems 
brighter and happier. And I'm so happy for you. And actually, I have a question for you. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna flip the script. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hijack your podcast. Do it. Um, Two way conversation. Yeah. yeah. So so one of my biggest gripes with mine and my brother's stream is the unfortunate reality that due to my work schedule, it is physically impossible to have a consistent stream schedule. The only consistency we really have is my brother, but sometimes it gets pushed later and later and later on in the evening because he has a 12 month old son, you know? (laughs) Uh, So you've had this amazing growth recently Mm-hmm. And every time I hop in your stream, it just seems like your numbers are going up and up and up. And I'm curious if you attribute it to the consistent stream schedule, networking, picking and choosing good rates, which I guess would be a part of networking. Like, is there any one thing that stands out to you as the biggest reason or is it just a whole bunch of like little things that all work out? Um. I'd say probably the biggest one would be consistency of scheduling. Um, and mm-hmm. that, that's usually been my advice to like every, everybody, if they've ever mm-hmm. talked to me about stuff like that is, is like having that consistent schedule, no matter at what, like, of course there's, there's a point where if you're just not, if you're not feeling up to like streaming for a day for like yeah. for personal reasons or you're sick or something like that, that's one thing. But I think a lot of people I've always kind of felt sometimes like, I feel like a lot of people merge like bad mental health day sometimes with laziness i have absolutely so there's been days where i'm just like i really don't want to stream this morning but is that because like i don't want to stream because i'm having like a mental health day or something or is it because i'm just feeling lazy and like having that differentiating between myself as if it's a mental health day i'm gonna take the day off yeah if it's yeah, if i'm yeah. just feeling lazy I just got to be disciplined and push through it. Mm -hmm. And I think being disciplined and having that consistent schedule, even on the days where I feel like sleeping in or the days where I just feel like I don't want to stream today. Like if I have it in my schedule, if I have it in my calendar, I'm going to make it happen at all costs unless something Mm -hmm. comes up. But I would say really, really being disciplined, really. And I I know hundred percent you guys are, but like, I'm kind of talking for a lot of the viewers or listeners out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Um, Yeah, this isn't just for us as a private, you know, private podcast. So it's for for the the world, for the world. But I think just trying to like, look yourself in the mirror and ask that difference is like, it's totally, everybody needs mental health days or sick days Mm -hmm. or like personal days. But if the days come where you told everyone you're going to stream, you have it in your schedule, you're going to stream, you know, you have plans for it and you just don't want to, that's where the discipline mm-hmm. kind of kicks in behind you and has mm-hmm. to push you forward. Yeah. And so I'd say consistency of scheduling has probably been a big I, one. Do, do you know what's interesting too? Um, and this, <laughs> I am like a very special exception to the rule. And I understand that is that when I'm having possibly a mental health day, I actually want to stream more because <clears throat> That's good what, to know this, that. The, yeah. yeah. And this this might be because right now it's not, it, it's still strictly a hobby yeah. uh, that, you know, happens to do pretty well. But in my job, like I, I have some really, really bad days. I see some stuff that I'd rather not see and deal with. And like, we're given amazing resources, people to talk to, therapists to talk to if needed. Um, and the other firefighters like we're always there for each other i had it happen not too too long ago where just one called me up and said hey you know i'm in a kind of a low place from one of those calls we ran you free i'm like absolutely do i need to pick up a six pack uh he said no he's got some i'm like great i'm on my way uh and we just kind of like hung out laughed talked and life's good um so for me when i have like those particularly rough calls or rough days I get really excited at the thought of streaming because that is, it's not a full escape because let's be honest, if you've seen the start of my stream, I always start by being like, here was, whoop, hit my mic. Here was this amazing call we ran on. Oh my God, I was inside a door building that was on fire. I did this, we did this. And I love talking about it and laughing. And in its own weird way, it becomes like, not like a bed session. Yeah, but it's therapeutic because I love, Clearly, I love talking about my job. Like, what's that classic joke? How do you spot a firefighter at a party? Oh, don't worry. They'll tell you. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I Like, I I love talking about it, but it 
it's just such a nice stress relief because on the other end of the computer, the chat is active and asking questions. And I'm, I know that at least one of them are probably smiling. And so for me, it's the idea that I'm helping somebody else smile. Maybe they're having a bad day. And here I am laughing, joking, being energized, doing stupid one arm push ups. I don't know what, but <laughs> something that is cheering other people up and making them have enjoyment is like my therapy. So if I'm having like a, for me, what I would consider a mental health day, I'm like, I can't wait to hit that go live, but <laughs> come on, can't come soon enough. We're good. We're that, good. We're good. <laughs> that touches point on something uh, kind of important. And I've mentioned this to quite a few people. Uh, I've made, I've mentioned this on stream before. It's important to have a positive outlet because oh, yeah. no matter what you do for a living, no matter what it is, you will have those days where you're right. It's just those, you need that mental day. You need something to help you out. Uh, and the other important thing to realize is whatever that positive outlet is, it will change over time. Sometimes oh, yeah. it will last weeks. Sometimes it will last years. There was a point in time where I had a lot of pent up anger while I was in middle school and high school and I was in wrestling and something about wrestling somebody and slamming them on the ground and, you know, doing that or getting slammed myself. That was therapeutic. <clears throat> After that, it was playing competitive video gaming. That was therapeutic. Eventually, that was no longer, you know, kind of working. Then it was taking really late night walks, like from midnight until six in the morning with a group oh, of yeah. friends. Just, oh, I miss those days. I miss Just those walking, walks. right? Just po walking Pokemon and talking Go. and venting. Be way before then. <laughs> this is well before Pokemon Go. Yeah, this is back like... 10, we were it was like ago? 2000 yeah i was gonna say it was probably about like late 2000 you know like 2006 to 2010 yeah. time frame we used to do this um but and now pokemon go is actually that's a good one right. that'd be a good and, one to uh, do during it yeah right and play so more. oh god i play way too often i'm too hooked on that uh but they're, and then they're like, it just they're changes. like passion phases yeah. right like exactly um, exactly and it's okay for it to change. It's okay for one thing to no longer give you that, yo, know, that little bit of a, uh, is it dopamine or serotonin? Whichever the, the really positive one, serotonin, dopamine. I think. Dopamine, all right, that's the one. Thank you. Uh, it's okay for both. that to not have that same feel. Some people, it's literally just sitting on their bed listening to music. That's fine as long as you have that <laughs> outlet and to be willing to discover a new one. But I have to emphasize one key word, positive make I, sure it's something positive so that, that's actually uh to to kind of piggyback off that positive that is why i won't drink if i'm upset or sad mm -hmm. because i don't want to associate bad feelings with drinking and i don't like the idea of being a you know angry sappy whatever drunk i'm the when i'm drunk i'm just like louder and more flirtatious i and happy and, super happy super happy uh but it's funny too because like you talked about outlets changing one that's been consistent for me for the past 15 years is actually i just go running and uh i hate running i hate running I with a too. passion it sucks but so what i do is it's not so much that i enjoy it and it clears my mind it's just that i get so tired i can't think of anything else besides this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. Why am I running? Why am I running? And I forget why I was sad in the first place. <laughs> well, running also releases a lot of dopamine, right? It does. Yeah. And hey, you're losing weight working out too. There, yeah, right? There's a whole lot of helping positive. the heart. You're helping your heart. Yeah, that's. I feel like a lot true. of things I've read just from like a lot of different sources over the years. Whenever like you're have mentally upset or just like something's going on in your <laughs> life, a lot of people advocate for exercising. Um, just because, mm -hmm. especially exercising outdoors, because it gets yeah. you like in the sunlight with the vitamin D. It's essentially like mm -hmm. your body is hating itself, and we're gonna put you in the best situation for your body to love itself, kind of thing that is true and that also touches on a very important thing you I need to be able to love <laughs> yourself you know, of course you do but you have to be willing to and that's something that uh i tell people i'm like look no matter what is going on you have to be willing to love yourself if you hate yourself if you dislike yourself you are in the wrong mental space and you need to find something to turn that around go talk to a therapist go talk to a good 
positive friend go do something to help turn that image of yourself around uh, you you Don't can't turn spiral. that too much though and think you're like the god of the world oh, and the yeah, hottest yeah, thing yeah, yeah. in the world and be like humble be humble right. there's, there's a little like a good kid. middle ground hey, there's, exactly. there's always there's always going to be somebody to humble you if yeah. oh, god yeah. uh, well, actually I, I i wanted to uh touch up on that therapist thing so i'm very happy to see that we're approaching a point in time where the idea of going to a therapist or seeking help is much more accepted um and encouraged and something oh, yes yeah, encouraged absolutely thankfully. and something i try to do is because i know that i uh, especially a younger generation it's you don't want to you don't want to look bad you don't want to look embarrassed in front of your peers and so what i try to do is emphasize to people like hey if i'm willing to do this and i run into burning buildings for a living you shouldn't be ashamed yeah i'm willing to talk about feelings i'm willing to admit that it like mm -hmm. i can go see a therapist i've talked to people i like i have these here just for the people that are like embarrassed about it i have cat ears i'll put cat ears on stream nice. i put these on top of my fire helmet <laughs> i don't care i uh, and it's the idea of like <laughs> some people are i love that hat yes, by the way yes uh, but it's the idea of like you shouldn't be ashamed to be who you are and you shouldn't be ashamed to admit that you need help to ask and for help is the exactly big one. and that's what yeah anything. and so I, I try to encourage people to be like hey like uh i'll be honest like i broke down and cried yesterday on stream i started off the stream crying i uh, didn't want to but there was uh unfortunate news but I tried to spin that into a positive and say, hey, it's okay to cry. Yeah. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to show what some might consider weakness. It's yeah. fine. Like, don't be ashamed to ask for help and don't be ashamed to be yourself. Like, yeah, um, you something, something I wanted to just kind of touch on a little bit was the asking for help part. It doesn't have to just be a mental thing if you're at and this is kind of just a learning lesson for anyone watching if you haven't kind of realized this part in life it's okay to to ask for help part of that like i don't know situation it's okay to ask for help and kind of a funny example i like to share for this one it's kind of a random one uh but this was a learning experience for one of our best friends that we mentioned earlier uh in the podcast light uh him and i i was driving i realized i'm like oh wait uh, I needed to top off the oil in my car because uh, I ran out. I didn't have any more in my garage. So we just quickly stopped by AutoZone, went in, bought some, cool, went out. And I could not take off the cap for the oil. It was welded on there. I could not get it off for the life of me. And um, I was like, okay, be right back. I'm going to go see if one of the guys in there can get it. And like, no lies here, actually looked at me and said, are you sure? Like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with you? I just didn't think you would go ask for help. I was like, why not? I'm not getting it. I'm stronger than you. You're not going to get it. I mean, you and I could work <laughs> together, you know, do the fusion dance. Like, let's try No. Heart I mean, of the one cards. Of the guys, right? One of the guys came out really, really, really big, stocky guy. He struggled with it for a moment. Got it. I was like, cool. Shook his hand. Thanks. Poured it in there. Have a good one. Then it took off. And for him, that was one of those growth moments where he realized, he's like, oh, he thought, he truthfully thought that I was too prideful to ask for help when it came to something of a physical nature like don't get me wrong i'm not going to be over here like lifting whole trees on my own obviously <laughs> but something as simple as taking the cap off you know where you uh, put the oil in the engine he's like oh well you should be able to do that like why ask for help i'm like oh because i've been here for a whole minute and i'm not getting it and i want to go because we're going to go get food <laughs> like well, yeah, it's okay to ask for help it does not matter the situation it is okay to say i can't do this i need, Actually, my, I need gonna... my wife to hear that when i'm trying to open like the pasta <laughs> red right? sauce things because i'm like that pickle <laughs> jar oh Dude, it's so tap impossible the, tap the edge on the corner you know just a little bit hit, don't break hit the <laughs> top release the pressure yeah, yeah exactly i i like when people hand me stuff it's like get this i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm the strongest yeah. man alive! Uh, actually, yeah. I, I, I wish... took, uh, real quick, real quick. Uh, when that happens to me, whenever somebody hands me something to try to open, and I'm like, I'm fighting with it, I can't get it. I literally look at them and say, "Yeah, this thing's actually glued shut. It's impossible to open. Let's get something else." <laughs> like, it's okay. Uh, if I, I can't do it, no one can. 
I'm going like full circle back to like us starting streaming. I wish oh, yeah, that yeah, was the topic. <laughs> I, I wish that was something we did when we started. Was like, I I realized how little I actually watched other streams mm -hmm. to think about like what should a layout look like, what should all this be like, mm -hmm. and I I kind of wish that like we reached out to some people and been like, hey, you're a full time streamer. Do you have suggestions? Do you have Mm -hmm. like anything you recommend asking for help then would have saved <laughs> us a lot of heartache oh hunt oh. that's some, I, that's I, actually I, something I, I'm, I'm really struggling with i feel like right now is is like i really i i crave feedback like so much and i've i've asked a couple people just kind of like if they have any streaming suggestions or anything for like anything for the channel or anything and it just always comes back with like everything looks good and sounds great and i like love the camera and audio and i'm like that's not what i want tell me what sucks please just yeah. so i can fix it See, and... well something i was thinking just looking <laughs> Reach at up, buddy, right now <laughs> oh, wait. I'll, I'll give you constructive all... criticism all right no let's no, get... no, no. It's, it, no I, I don't mean that like as being it, rude but it's kind of like if you if you write a short story or something or a book it's like or a screenplay you want constructive criticism yes. you don't want yes men and yes women being like yes. hey, it's perfect it's like no it's not what can i do and so i i i totally get that so i don't mind watching your streams and thinking critically and yeah. be like why not yeah. try this and not as a harsh way yeah but mm -hmm. something i was thinking constructive when we first criticism. On, and i've been wanting to tell us or tell this to you in the past your background right now like i remember even oh. like what like several several months ago kind of seeing it where it felt i i'm <laughs> Like it felt just smaller with a lot of stuff. Right now it's peaceful. Just <laughs> the purples, the blues it, behind you. I'm this like, is I'm chaotic. Feeling... This is like <laughs> I'm you throwing crap. Lit I'm literally throwing oh, you crap on the wall and seeing there. what sticks. So like, yeah, but like your room right now, truthfully, I feel like if I were to go into your house, walk into that room, I would fall asleep on that couch in less than a minute because <laughs> it's just so serene. It looks like uh, like I'm about to get a massage or something. Just like. like let your inner peace flow. I think that's, that's what right. Ellie's doing right over there. She's <laughs> <laughs> see, see, and like I always loved with your stream too about you know the music, the ukulele. Every, oh, I love the ukulele. Oh my god, um, I love your everything music. else. Like yeah, I, I've got no musical talent. I'm over here. I can play the drum. <laughs> no, like I. But that's also knowing your brand, knowing what you're good at, and riding that. So you're really good at your brand. I'm gonna give you that one. Oh yeah. Like sometimes I wonder. I'm like, huh. I wonder if you could put more stuff behind you, but then that would take away from that serene. No, please don't. Vibe. The, the please color, don't. the color palette, everything mm -hmm. is amazing. Actually, there's a story I've been meaning to tell you for like a hot minute now. It's been at least a month or two um, that happened. So it always works out that when i go on shift if it's one of the days you're streaming it's like right when i get to the station i get the little notifications zephyr's xp is going live and i'm like cool i'll listen in and usually like the first thing we do is you check the truck you check make sure the equipment's there it's good everything's where it needs to be i've got to make sure it can pump if we get a fire all the you know fluids are good all that good stuff and i when i do that i'll usually listen to your stream and a lot of the times i don't even announce i'm there i'm just like you know, don't have time, hands are busy, it's yeah. phones in my pocket. I'm listening to, oh my God, fortune cookie. And I love it. It just, <laughs> it kills me in the best possible way. But there was one particular stream and it was a music stream. And I popped in and I made a request. And you said that you Eris were saving theme. the song for something else. It was Eris, Eris's theme. And you played it and I didn't like explain this to you but all the other guys they were done checking the truck it was just me out there because i have to do slightly more meticulous things with other stuff and i was sitting in the driver's seat of the fire truck headphones in watching and listening to you play this song which is my favorite piece of video game music period and it ha it hits me on a very emotional level for reasons outside the game and like I just had like that single tear shed and I'm just sitting there like <laughs> grinning ear to ear. And then in the back of my mind is all, oh, please don't let any other firefighters walk out here. They're going to think something is terribly wrong. But I was so happy because for the next 48 hours, I didn't know what kind of chaos we were going to get. And truthfully, I don't remember what happened that shift, but I was just so happy and just everything was perfect in the world. It's like I'm a kid sitting in a fire truck listening to this 
beautiful piece of video game music played by one of the best guys that I've ever had the privilege of talking to. So thank you for that. Yeah. And long story short, yeah, yeah. long, long story short. The oh, British I could make it is, longer. He requested music. You played it. He loved it. All right. There you go. That's the <laughs> no, thank, thank you, dude. No. And honestly, that's something that makes me really happy about streaming is no, we're not big streamers. Like my brother and I are still considered small streamers and I'm okay with that. I want to be big. I want to be big. I want to be big. But uh, I'm okay being a small or small streamer because I still love that personal interaction. And one of the happiest moments of my streaming career, if you want to call it a career, is when somebody said in chat, and we've actually had this happen a few times, but I remember the first time somebody said, thank you. I needed this today. And hearing that, I was like, needed what to see, uh, a balding man play video games poorly. Like, we're, we're, what did you need today? And we're just laughing and talking. And I love hearing that. I love that connection that we build with people. Uh, another really great example is actually Wolf. Um, he joined, he hopped in our stream from a raid back in like November, December. And shockingly, he has not missed a stream since that day, which is just wow. mind blowing e to me. Even wow. when I do like a, like a surprise, yes like yesterday was like, oh, mm -hmm. I actually have nothing going on this evening. Hey guys, I'm going to stream. Stream starts yeah. in two hours. And he and still I went to Discord. stops and joins. And he actually said that crazy enough, despite the pandemic going on, despite everything, he felt like he's become more comfortable in group settings. Uh, and Wolf, if you're watching this and I'm phrasing it wrong, I do apologize, but just trying to get a rough thing here. But you're saying that he had, like, since joining our community, he really feels like he is part of a group, part of a community. And he joined us for some game nights, and that was his first time ever really doing that. And he feels like he you know, belongs. I was like, dude, you have a seat at our table. Yes. Like, yeah, if we if we go out to dinner and you happen to be in town, you are joining us. I don't care. You will always have a seat at my table. Because that rounds. to me, I actually said this on Wednesday, something could happen and I could like the stream for me could be done tomorrow. I'd be heartbroken, but I would still be happy because of what we've accomplished and the community we've I won't even say built the community that's just gathered mm -hmm. and it's not like it's just oh it's our community it's also your community it's fortune cookies community it's all of our communities just in this beautiful mesh together yep. and that is like it blows my mind that we have that it is absolutely beautiful and i love it i feel like the the quicker if, if somebody want, is listening to this or watching this and is thinking mm -hmm. about streaming or is like just started streaming I mean, biggest thing I would just kind of wrap from all of this is like the sooner you realize it's not about video games and it's oh, about God, yeah. the friendships and the communities you build. Mm -hmm. And the game is just that medium that brings interested viewer over to interested mm -hmm. streamer and just brings you together. The sooner you mm -hmm. realize it's about the friendship and the community, the sooner you'll start seeing, you'll start seeing growth. Yeah, exactly. Do, do, you, know do you know what's interesting about that? And Dave, I've got a a random piece of a1 twins trivia for you in a second that you should <laughs> be able to answer no, oh. <laughs> I, but actually there, there is one exception to that rule but that is and those people already know who they are and that is your professional the elite video gamer like your yeah, the, yeah 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 that, and that that is like your 0.1 percent of all streamers if that it's like hey i'm on a professional league of legends team or overwatch team right. you know that's your shroud kind of thing where it's like you don't actually have to talk at Build all community chat. Pe yeah people will watch you because you're yes. the best player in the world at this game but again that is that like exceptional percent right and so i have to try and tell people i'm like oh if people in our community they let me know it's like hey you know i'm streaming i i keep track of our uh you know our self-promotion oh, tab in discord and i'll go in and be like oh hey they're streaming to one person and it's probably them i uh, I'll go in and it is so hard. I think it's easier to stream now than it was like when we only had one, two, three viewers, because mm -hmm. if nobody's chatting, 
you still have to be entertaining and you I have to I just, talk. You have to you talk, have to explain, to explain what you're doing. And I, I can't tell you how many times I see it that I'll go in a stream and it's literally just right. Right. And, and there's mm -hmm. a delay and on the viewer. There, so, so exactly. by the time they look over and they're like, Oh, there's somebody watching. Hey, how you doing? That person is probably already, already left. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, uh, and the majority it's of Twitch painful. viewers lurk too. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't want to yeah. talk. They just want to watch. Um, they want to listen. Who was, I think it was a uh, red lantern in chat. I was talking about that, how one of the fears I had about starting streaming is that that fear of failure uh, that's something that i've always struggled with is fear of rejection fear of failure and it's tough to step out of your comfort zone and be willing to fail it really is and it's something i, I can preach it all day but i was still battle with it and i actually said and i realized at the time that this could come across really harsh for some people i said i was afraid that we'd be streaming for several years and only stream to like one two three people and it's literally me my brother and like two friends like two <laughs> friends that we've known for years and those are the only viewers and i like and i'm so happy with what we have now that we have people who come in that chat with us and we have a great time uh and red lantern in our chat said oh so you mean like me and i was like that one stings i'm sorry buddy what are you doing to grow yeah like what are you doing to grow your stream like that's mm -hmm. that's the big thing right there if you're caught in that vicious cycle what are you doing to advance? And the scary part about streaming too is I'm really happy if I get my viewers in the 20s range. I'm happy if it goes above that, I'm in the ecstatic range, but there are some streams that it's lower than that and it's in mm -hmm. the teens and that's okay, it happens. But what scares me is when there are streamers who are Twitch partners and I started following them before I even started streaming, and I used to see them in the hundreds, like several hundreds, 500, 600 range. And now I go back and look at them and they're less than 50, less than 30 viewers at any given time. I'm like, what happened? And that scares the heck out of me. And a lot of times I look at it and they didn't do anything to grow, to innovate, to, to continue that climb. They just kind of hit a point and coasted or just even dropped in quality. And that scares the crap out of me still. I actually have a, uh, a thought or an analogy about that and that would be it's kind of like working out mm -hmm. it takes constant work you can't yep. just like work out hard for a month and be like i'm fit for life you need to keep going <laughs> I wish and so, you could. <laughs> oh me too buddy i i kind of fell off with a recent injury getting back into it and i'm like this sucks that's that's, that's also the difference between i feel like people who are like who, who want to lose weight by eating differently and it's like you, some people just want to lose weight to lose weight to lose weight like that's their only goal but other people like <laughs> want to change their diet change their exercise routine change their sleeping patterns and change their life and they'll lose weight as you know a cause of the, of doing that but like in reality mm -hmm. they're changing their entire life mm -hmm. so. yeah that's cool that and that's not easy to like to go cold turkey like that is no. absolute credit um i'm gonna oh yeah you had a, piece, don't, a gonna, piece of trivia for me i'm still i did and I'm, so no i'm, I'm going to double back though actually whenever i talked about earlier how like that first year was kind of like a trial and error and then i, oh, I consider Way like back <laughs> yeah i consider like the actual uh point that like we really started streaming to be early 2020 that's when i sat down was like okay who do i want to emulate what streamers do i look up to um and i decided every day i was going to do something to improve the stream something small something big doesn't matter i'm at work i don't actually have a laptop so like when i was at work it would be brainstorming or networking going in other excuse me going in other streams and just that little bit of work and if you if you well you weren't around back then but or for our stream but uh the layout changed so Turn much because it was like it's like what fits what works i'm like okay here's something but i don't quite like it it takes up too much of the screen here's something else i don't quite like it it's hard to read and eventually settled on the little camera in the corner that was like cool i can cut out the corners of it and it looks pretty cool. neat and i like that oh look here's something to just like rotate through now that's done what can i do oh what about an intro timer oh what about an intro hype video what about this and 
And I find that that little bit of work just every day or now, like every other day, little tiny things to improve is what keeps me motivated to innovate, change it up, find what works. And uh, hopefully continue that up to keep the stream from like becoming stagnant, like my brother mentioned. It's yeah, also, so, I, it's oh, also I'm glad like, you said mentioned there. I thought you said like my brother. I was like, oh, uh, mentioned. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Shots fired. No. Shots fired. Oh, sorry, I mean to cut you off. Uh, oh, ahead, no, sorry. you're good. You're good. I, I, I think one thing that's I, I've definitely realized too, and a lot of other people have mentioned who are streamers, like it feels like once you're in OBS, it's such mm -hmm. a, a creative canvas almost like, as a streamer because mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like you know could i move something here could i move this over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and then i mean in all honesty a lot of changes we make to our cameras or to like follower this or who mm -hmm. recently followed like most viewers don't really care about a lot of that stuff it's yeah. more for like an us thing and like yeah. the professionalism so, in our head putting it out into obs mm -hmm. but it I, totally is it's like it, a canvas and it's so much it, fun it, is. it, it really also is. adds up though if you think about it because mm -hmm. of the small changes they don't notice but again look at the person who's doing fitness and dieting and stuff like yes. that if you see that they see themselves every day and they don't notice a change right. but then somebody who sees them once and then sees them six months later like, notices whoa! a drastic yeah. change and it can be the same way with the stream and there's somebody you know the next time you go live who's going to find your stream for the first time and see this beautiful layout and the the coloring and the panels you've got behind you and be like wow this guy has got it together and he knows what he's doing but in reality it's all these little tiny changes over time that got you to this point See, i actually i, I just think that's realized beautiful. i just thought of something uh and you mentioned like if if like slight criticism something constructive criticisms or criticisms uh i don't know why my brother just made me think of this it was something that uh, a big streamer had said or it might no it might have been harris heller uh the stream doctor alpha zero alpha, yeah, alpha gaming alpha gaming yeah alpha gaming, yeah. Alpha gaming, yeah. Alpha he, yeah he was yeah it was him actually it was him he said if you have or have something behind you that is a conversation starter something that will make people be like oh they like this i like this i like them uh so of course yeah my brother has your know, stuff right i've got your know, black mage village right there that you can barely see of course there's us there's pokemon playing poker pokemon right there is also digimon and cactuar playing cards I penguins of madagascar I, dude i swear that <laughs> penguins of madagascar poster i had that when i was growing up i swear that exact one <laughs> yeah, it's like yes, i just dude put that i up saw that on your instagram no it was your TikTok. <laughs> Your TikTok. <laughs> oh my God. I had, I rewatched that like five times and showed wifey. I'm like, you have to watch this one. <laughs> right. Actually, I'm going to buy like the that. other three. I just the don't want to. Stuff. They've got funny, Squirtle, though. Bulbasaur, and Charmander. Doing something had, similar. Yeah. Uh, nice. That's actually my wife's poster from like when the movie first came out. The first. Oh, hell uh, yeah. Yeah. The first I, I to do this. I'll be right back. Guys. Oh, you're good. Go you're good. You're I got saying, David. You're good. Yep. So. It's funny because my wife, I kept telling like my wife in stream, I'm going to hang out by me. And my wife, she's probably going to come home from a little vacation she is on and be like, really? You hung that up because it's hers. And I'm like, well, if you want to hang it up somewhere, you can. If not, I'm stealing it and it's going right there behind me. But those conversation starters are a big thing. They and are. so something I was thinking about just kind of looking behind you is I'm like, you know what? If I were to pop in your stream right now, and let's say you're playing a game that I've already played through, cool, whatever, there's hundreds of other streamers playing the same game let's just assume that because there probably are mm -hmm. what what in your background right now would draw me in besides you know, it's like it's peaceful and serene and it, it truthfully is a gorgeous layout like i'm not lying i'm not trying to knock on your background i think oh, no, it's no, yeah. gorgeous but something i was thinking is if you had like i, I know you said you have like a guitar you have your ukulele you, know, you have your musical mm -hmm. instruments if you had like laid them out somewhere somewhere that show and it doesn't have to like obstruct your whole background it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like a there's these beautiful lights that are shifting colors a guitar right there <laughs> it, big bold and stands out and doesn't feel like it fits yeah. but if you put it somewhere like uh uh not I, I don't know if it's your left or right from my point of view it's your right shoulder so it probably is mm, this one? Uh, yeah that, yeah exactly perfect there's just that little opening i think it might be a dog bed right there i'm not 100 positive but if you had like your a guitar just sitting right there just that little bit that's just someone could I've look right in up. there yeah is I, that a guitar and then that starts that's like 
oh are you a musician yeah actually mm -hmm. if you do a channel points redemption i'll play a song hey someone in chat redeem this please mm -hmm. uh and yo because you know for a fact you got all your loyal viewers who have hundreds of thousands of yo <laughs> uh the viewer points and somebody's just gonna be like bam drop it play free bird and you're like no not free bird <laughs> but regardless bam and then you got it and then that's a hook that if just one small suggestion and you mm -hmm. could be like wow that twin is an idiot and i'm fine with that no, but you asked you asked and i just realized i'm like that's something that draws you in is something in the background like yo Right here, I have Ken and Ryu, and this one I symbolize more for me and my brother if I was in better shape. Uh, this one, if it's kind of hard to even read what it is because the poster's small and it's like angled sideways. It's a Final Fantasy VII poster. Just like no one can even tell what this is, even when I'm on full screen, and I'm okay with that. I, I just, it's more for me. More for me is like when I walk in the room, then actually kind of a little tangent so my I, son i, I actually loved did these i actually oh, did yeah. have um my guitar like right behind me and my piano I, I where, the, where the yeah the keyboard was. I don't but then i i got a brand new sit stand desk and it is mm -hmm. massively it's huge and <laughs> nice. so we had to completely rearrange the whole place and i was gonna put the piano kind of over there but then mm -hmm. I, it, stuff wouldn't fit so i kind of had to move a little couple things but i'm actually yeah. going to be getting like a new lens hopefully soon so we'll actually like blow out the background even more so it'll be more well, that's OTE. cool so kind of uh, going if, if you don't oh yeah, yeah what were you saying i i'm so yeah. sorry a little talk oh, no, sick moment. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna end up texting you to see what camera you use because that's the next upgrade i want to make to the stream is like i like this camera but when i stream the background sometimes gets a little blurry and like my little gg light that lights up you can't really tell what it yeah, is you can. and, and i'm like i i want to upgrade the camera and then give david the hand me down 922 so and then i'll have a one. camera to do magic tricks down here and i don't exactly. have to actually just take the five minutes to go out and buy one yeah everybody's happy Hon yeah, so honestly i feel like because with cam cameras are interesting because there's like a such a huge jump between like oh, yeah. like webcams and then kind of you can kind of get by with like a cam link and a gopro which looks really nice mm. like a used gopro and a cam link mm -hmm. is is like mm -hmm. two three hundred bucks but then when you jump up to like a mirrorless camera with like a, a decent-ish lens that like kind of looks mm -hmm. nice that can be start like right at a thousand eight hundred to a thousand dollars so like uh, it's in investment. that 500 range there's like not much in that 500 range which kind of sucks uh, another streamer that uh i was talking to about it because he has like this amazing setup nice camera and i had asked me he said it was like the a600 or a6000 a6, or something 000. like that a6000 i'm like cool it's a nice looking camera it's sleek with his setup let's look 600 bucks cool right i'm gonna wait so <laughs> yes. i actually right. have that exact camera um i actually think it's right wow. behind me um we bought that like seven years ago and i actually huh. w wanted to use it as my second camera over here but there's like rust in the uh usb port for it so uh, it doesn't connect yeah. to hdmi or anything um but the one i'm using right now is our I didn't buy the camera at all for streaming. Like we originally bought it like five, six years ago for my wife's business for photography. Um, and oh, nice. when I started streaming, I originally bought a, a webcam. I think it's the Logitech C922 or something. Yeah, and this that's what was, I used. <laughs> and this was like early March of last year. And so I got it and I was right when I got it delivered, I started, I watched a YouTube video about how you can make like a mirrorless camera and use that as a webcam. And I'm like, for the exact same, oh, for like 50 bucks more that I bought this webcam for, I can just mm. use my mirrorless camera. Probably should do that. So I ended yeah. up doing that and then return the webcam. And then afterwards they were like going for like $200 because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and yeah shortages and everything. But um, right. yeah, the one I'm using right now is the Sony a7R2, um, nice. which is a really, it has, it's actually not the best one to use because <laughs> it has so many pixels that like when the light starts getting lower it gets really grainy so i have yeah. to like have my lights right here like full blasted like blinding a lot of the time so i'm like playing dark souls over here and like uh my eyes yeah. Yeah, but, the game that's like super dark and you're like, right beauty is pain are... beauty is pain 100 yeah. but for like anybody out there that you know i always tell people like just with whatever you have if you want to stream just start get it all set up right now don't buy anything just get what you can set up right now and yeah. get going and then if you got some money you want to spend get a get a good mic absolutely mm -hmm. mike's the first one everyone Audio should go first for. and mm -hmm. then um lights get, get yep. some decent lights and then after that 
then that'd be where then the camera would come I in. Need to, I need to actually buy a nice ring light. Literally what I use right now is that I have like one of those kind of stand up light or mm -hmm. lamp posts, but I can adjust it. And at first I'm like, oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. And I saw, I forget what it was. Like it was a video or a streamer said like, oh, bounce it off the wall and use that yeah. light. I'm like, does that work? Cause I was like putting t-shirts over it. See oh, what works. It, yeah. Is safe. <laughs> yeah. And so eventually it was like, huh. And I pointed towards the wall and that's what I'm using right now. I know a ring light's like ideal, but in the meantime, okay. I'm using a lamp I already had using a C922. The mic was my recent big investment, um, but I like wave. this one. Yeah. yeah. The wave yeah. one, but that's... it's also because it comes with the audio Yeti. mixer. Yes. Yeah. And Yeti, I, I was using the Yeti for a long time and I really, I really liked it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. The wave is so good though, because it's pretty much oh, like believing. the Go XLR and like an XLR mic combined into one. Mm -hmm. So hell yeah. I, I saw that. It's, it's really nice. Um, something I would say, if you're a, a new streamer, you want to start streaming, you're watching this, please, for the love of everything, don't think you got to drop like three grand on everything to get, oh. you know, this super crisp clone. Please, please don't do that. Something funny enough and uh, Fortune Cookie can talk about this. Uh, her and uh, another friend of the stream, an amazing streamer himself, Riggs, 840 Riggs. Riggs helped her, if I remember correctly, get some of her streaming stuff off of eBay from people who wanted to try streaming, drop money on the big stuff, and then gave up after like a month because they're like, oh, this is hard. I don't like it. And so she was able to get like top quality, as good as brand new stuff for like wickedly cheap from all these mm -hmm. people who dropped tons of cash and gave up instantly. Don't be one of those people. I Just did that use what you have I did that exact same thing with my Elgato <laughs> capture card. Like when I, oh, yeah. I bought it nice. used, I think for like $70. And when I oh, went God. and yeah. asked the lady for it, she was just like, I tried streaming and just like nobody came in. So I just am going to stop streaming. I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> Neat. Uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Right, right. But I, I actually, can, I, or sorry, what were we saying? Oh. Oh, no, I was going to say the same thing actually goes with like overlays and stuff like that. I've talked to yes. people who are like, I spent I spent a lot of money on an overlay. I'm like, I mean, if you want to, if you have go the for money it, but if, do it, but if you're if you're just getting started, like stream elements comes with free overlays. And like, mm -hmm. I feel like we're in the the time frame where less is more. So mm -hmm. it's like just having the camera in the corner is plenty and i think yeah. of streamers that i look up to like uh hand off the bay usually just has like the camera in the corner um a recent streamer i found found sweetheart alley she has just the camera and it it works that's all you need you don't need so much stuff cluttering the screen but that's just me and like i i keep going into small streams because I, I love supporting small streams yeah. i know what it, i know what it was like having nobody to talk to so i look for those people with one or two streams and it's like one or two viewers yeah. or one, one or two streams one I or two you. viewers and i always feel well i guess i can't feel bad because it's their money and their choice i shouldn't like try to guilt trip anybody it's like oh yeah i just dropped a whole bunch of money to get this overlay i'm like fiverr <laughs> fiverr I oh I, I love fiverr i think the other thing like a lot of people to like need to look in the mirror and ask themselves is like what do they want to get out of streaming like <laughs> there like, you go like for a lot of people they just want to stream to just play games and have fun with friends and like yeah, the growth is true. not even that's a thing true. and for them like do do you want to drop thousands of dollars on cool cameras or mics or overlays or mm -hmm. anything like that like totally have fun it's a hobby go for it have mm -hmm. a blast but i think mm -hmm. for yes. the people we're talking to are the people who want to yes. grow who have yeah. 10 average viewers and want to get to 100 or have aren't yep. affiliates yet and want to get to affiliate and partners and mm -hmm. like those are the mm -hmm. people we're trying to talk to through yeah all this. I, I realized how much of like a gatekeeper i kind of sounded like there and yeah, I, I was like i want i was like i, I really really don't want to <laughs> don't want to do that sorry so i do apologize <laughs> no, anybody you're if you're like man screw this guy no yeah. I, I will so truly, like, and, I'm i will truly I, I say should also, or, yeah go for it um I'll, i was I'll, gonna say don't don't spend the money kyle, if you don't you're have it off death. Oh, i no, thought you said go to you're good you're good go for it kyle you're good. All right, you're up, Zeph. <laughs> um, I, I would I would tell everybody too that like if you have a console or a PC, mm -hmm. you probably can start streaming just without buying mm -hmm. a single thing. Honestly, like yeah. your phone, your smartphone, a lot of the time is better than uh, the webcams that you can buy, like Logitech webcams, and you can get like free software or software that's like a dollar or two. 
um you yeah. can use like the audio from your phone and you can obs is free software to stream from so if you really want to stream just make it happen right now with as with not spending anything and then if you like it 50 bucks for a decent microphone you know 100 bucks for a decent microphone and some lights that's kind of when you start mm -hmm. investing into it um exactly. one, one thing <laughs> um one wh i feel like as somebody that has spent some decent money on like getting a stream set up pretty kind of well put together um i'm constantly reminded that none of it brings in more viewers like having fancy lights or a good mic i mean it, it like helps maybe retain some people who like the audio and stuff mm -hmm. like that but one of my really good friends um dahlia the monkey she oh, yeah. streams Dahlia. straight from a playstation 5 straight no overlays yeah. no alerts yeah. she streams from her playstation 5 just and she just plays games and has fun and she yeah. she's right on she's the verge of hitting partner. It. she's gonna hit partner I, I was gonna say i'm surprised she's not partner yet honestly like yeah. every right time there. i go in her numbers are up and up and up but she, she's streaming from a PlayStation 5 with like 130 exactly. people like in her chat. Like you don't need fancy camera or fancy lights or fancy overlay or anything to hit it. You just you just got to build a community, build relationships and just be the best version of yourself you can be. And and the yep. people will gravitate to that. Yep. That's a, a great point as well, is that be yourself. Just be be happy, be outgoing, be humble and more people will come to you if you put on a persona for streaming to me that just feels exhausting yeah because then you have to constantly keep that up for however long you're going there's some people that pull it off phenomenally we we all know some of the big ones out there but truthfully just be yourself i, I was going to say the exception to that of course is if you're putting on a, an actual show like you're putting on like code a show for people Code, Code Miko is a great example of that. Dr. Disrespect is the first one that I thought one of, one of course. Of. Yeah, you know, it's like those, the, yeah, there, the streamers. There's always an outlier exception. Like, yeah, exception, rules, not the rule. Thank you. That's That was the saying. I was trying to remember it. Uh, so who are the A1 <laughs> twins? <laughs> no, I, I'm over here talking like I know what I'm doing. No, you're good. You're good. Um, I, we totally could kind of like go right into that as well. That was, we just kind of like went to, this is the best part, honestly, about doing the podcast and talking with everybody like is it. like, we, I'll ask a question and 40 minutes later, we're like coming full circle around. And that's what it's all about is just kind of where the conversations take us. Um, it's, true. it's like having lunch with friends where you're just BSing and you know, the, the topic's like here, 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 here. Right. And right. we circle back right right i love it I love um it. Fun. one good question though i th think would be fun to ask is what kind of we kind of touched on it a little bit but like what got you both interested in streaming and who was the first one that did start streaming or was it both of you same time same day uh so the big one for getting us going was just friends pestering us mm -hmm. so finally yo we're like okay we'll do it or like my brother we, said well, mm -hmm. we had j rot's legend who was a good friend of ours a fellow firefighter like my brother a uh, long 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 time friend even before he was a firefighter and he streamed just to do it just for fun he never it, cared about being he's big the one and, i was rep he's the one i referenced earlier yeah, yeah we were both on injury duty together yeah. and he his stream was actually great like his numbers were popping he is well known in the kaizo mario community because he was loud boisterous he was fun he was swole as all heck but yeah. he didn't care about any of that he just played to have fun and you know he got us into it and my brother and i our stream originally the goal was two twins playing couch co-op games together that was the goal retro is even better just couch co-op the two of us bring in some other friends and then not too long later we realized due to scheduling conflicts it was just very difficult to constantly get the two of us together along with anyone else and that's when it started branching off into uh, twin one and twin a kind of solo streams with a periodic us together where did the yeah. like a1 oh sorry kyle what were you saying no 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 no, no. uh your, your question is fine i was just gonna bring up i i was very worried about the fact that like we're the a1 twins where's the other twin and i uh, it was a friend of ours who i know in person but she also frequents the streams she pointed out to me it's like she really enjoys it because with my brother and i you actually have two very different streams me i don't have anybody to worry about waking up except my neighbors who 
wake me up anyways because they yell at two in the morning at each other. So I'm back here like, oh, let's go, guys. Woo! And then you, I'm sorry, was that <laughs> loud? <laughs> no, 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 I cut out. Up. You're good. You're good. I just thought you find this exact moment. We're like a little under an hour and or about an hour and a half in. Pause the video. Freeze frame. It's like headphone warning in effect. Headphone I'm warning sorry. in effect. I, 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 turned, I tried to like get back because I didn't think it would no, carry no, that loud. I, I'm so sorry. I have compression on my Go XLR. You're good. You're good. Oh, sweet. Uh, but uh, and then you go to David's stream and she pointed out he's like, you know, he's a little more quiet, a little more no. wholesome, a little more mellow. And it's right on like the other side of the wall over here. And if I wake him it's like up, like two I, difference. Exactly. It's, it's two, different. two different contrasts. So in turn, people can come to the stream and there's something for everyone because not everybody wants a loud person who screams and you know it's just like energy 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 some people want the quiet and that's great and so when she told me that it was very relieving for me that it's like this is fine it's mm -hmm. going to work and uh, i'm sorry you had a question for us about oh. So it kind of oh, actually yeah. stemming from that, like where did the name A1 Twins come from? Obviously twins, like yeah, that one's not too complicated. Uh, wait, really? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. But whose idea was it for like, I'll be twin, I'm guessing twin A, <laughs> like it's first letter of the alphabet, one first number numerically, one uh, and one. You're, you're kind of going on the right path and it's kind of funny because in a very different universe, I would have been twin A, he would have been twin one instead of <laughs> you know how it is now, because there was not some well thought out, like him and I sitting down, I want to be one, name? I want to be eighth, and that works perfect. That Ogre one happen. and two, no. Yeah, shout out to the Halo pros. Um, whenever you're a twin, and this happens for all twins, it does not matter, identical, fraternal, two boys, two girls, one boy, one girl, Whoever it does came not first. Matter. Yeah, there's always that ask who's one, who's two, who's A, who's B, who's yellow, who's that, who's, who's the, other. the evil twin. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> now, we've heard, if you can ask us a unique twin question that we have not heard, I will be super impressed. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, but well, I got a unique dad joke earlier today, Dave. Ooh, I got to tell you. Uh, yeah, I'll have to hear that <laughs> later. Um, but <laughs> we were in, I want to say it was seventh grade, might have been eighth grade. And some there was a guy who was just pestering us about that and he would not stop it's just and such a who's it who's one who's two who's a who's b who's one just over and over and my brother just snapped on him he, and he goes he's one i'm a we're equal drop it already and that's how <laughs> we're like oh i'm one, twenty one, one, and we just rolled with it and then when we got uh aol email accounts to kind of date us even more there <laughs> It was, I had twin Damn. one in mine and he had twin A. We went to our first Smash Bros tournament and we're like, oh, we need gamer tags. Like, you know, we, cause while playing games uh, on the computer, like, you know, Need for Speed, anything else, we never used twin one and twin A. We never really- Nemesis and Frost. Yeah, we never associated <laughs> twin one, twin A with gaming. It was just, okay, that's, you know, and when people ask us, we have an answer. And we went to a, a tournament, uh, our first Smash Bros tournament back in 2007, I want to say it was, and we're like, oh, we need gamer tags. And we're like, well, we want something that people will look at and be like, oh yeah, it's those guys. Just so <laughs> they don't, they're not like, oh yeah, I don't think this person showed up and we're sitting there in the corner, nice and you know, polite. Uh, so I just put down twin one and I, I wanted to be cool, like fatality, the old pro gamer. And I did TW one end where it's twin one, but the one is the eye. And I ended up hating that with a burning passion and stopped <laughs> doing that as quickly as possible. But you know, it's like twin one, twin A, cool and then for many years of that we never made that combination for a1 and it wasn't until uh, a friend of ours solo sensei uh, eric is his real name he once cracked the joke about it saying hey when you guys team you should go by a1 sauce like that should be your tag or team name a1 sauce and we left out and when we were deciding we're going to stream and my name oh was god that night years remember. later we were at my house in my living room as me and my brother, my wife, Light was there. I, I think that was, I think it was the four of us. I think and, that was it. Yeah. And we were going through like, well, what should our Twitch stream name be? And we went through every possible thing. Did we want? Oh. And then finally we thought about like, well, what about A1? Yeah, like, you know, the A1. We want to be A1 sauce. No, that's terrible. 
Wait. Like, there, there was like, I don't remember all the examples, but there was like, there was a list. There was a list. There was one that was like somehow related to Donkey Kong in the names. I don't remember what it was, but somehow it fit with like A1, sure. something, sure. something, something. And it like, even, like we had ones that weren't even the A1. It's like twin one, twin A. No, it's all twin A, twin one. No, uh, the twins, the New the Mexico twins. Like yeah, like N M the fi- the five oh five twins because that's yeah. our area code. Yeah, All right. and, like and then finally we're like, well, what about A one twins? We're like, well, that kind of looks weird. I'll jumble together. A one underscore twins. Ooh. And I, oh, I was on my phone and immediately it's like it's not taken. Set up the Gmail for it. It's on. Got it and immediately grabbed it. Do you know what's funny? Actually, this is going to be like one of those. Uh, I've never met these individuals. I'm sure they are wonderful people. But on YouTube, there's another set of A1 twins. Yeah, I've seen that. And, really? And yeah. And they like their videos had views and they had more subscribers. And on YouTube, they don't let you change your URL until you hit a hundred subs. Mm-hmm. And and I was like in a race to get to that first hundred because we used my old YouTube account that I put Ninja Warrior stuff on and already had some subscribers. And I was like, subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube, let's go. And the we day we hit URL. 100 subs, like the moment somebody's like, hey, I subscribed to your channel. And I got the notification, I was like 100, jumped on my computer, submitted. I was like, you want to change your URL? A1 twins, because they didn't allow the underscore for some reason. And I was like, hey, once you do this, there's no going back. I'm like, no going back. We got it. No, we claimed. Nice. <laughs> I want it. They didn't jump on it. We need yeah. it. <laughs> You're too slow. I, you know what's funny too? If they ever like reached out and be like, we should do a collaboration. I think that'd be fun. Dude, that would be oh, awesome. Dude, Are they still actively posting videos? I totally couldn't think tell so. you. <laughs> I, whenever I pull up YouTube and I'm like, oh yeah, you'll just pull up A1 Twins real quick. There's pops up as well. And I've never seen their video count go up since I first noticed them yeah. on there. So I don't think they're even active anymore. But does it matter? Cause we got it first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's yeah, funny so that's the story of a1 twin so i'm going to play the uno reverse card i want to know where did you get your tag where did zephyrs come from xp specifically <laughs> is that meant to be i have a theory i'm sorry before you answer no, is good. it meant to be the crossed out eyes tongue sticking out face it is not is it for <laughs> how would you see that like XP? how would you oh yeah, like it's, it's the exercise it's like it, the X like is the eyes instead of a colon, and then the P is the tongue. Yeah. It's kind of like the. All right, here I got you. I got you. I guess I, I can my... kind of see it. I'm like looking at my keyboard right now. I, I tried to go for like the most obscure thing, hoping it would be right. Like <laughs> no. nobody in the right mind would ever get how. Oh, okay. XP. Oh, sure, sure, sure. XP instead. But like a tongue. Yeah, like the <laughs> knocked out face. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So what, what's the story of your um, Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to hear this. Well, so <laughs> Zephyr, I remember it was like eight or nine going to Disneyland with my family. And we went to California Adventure and they had this ride called the Zephyr. And it was just one of those like circle spin around kind of rides. Awesome. And then if you actually um, Google the term Zephyr, it means like a gentle breeze. So I, I always cool. just liked that name Zephyr and I'd play like games like Zelda and you'd have to rename Link. So I'd always rename him Zephyr, I'd play Final <laughs> Fantasy and rename him Zephyr. So I just like that word Zephyr. And then um, the XP was just like, because Zephyr was already taken. So I'm like, XP is kind of like experience. Yeah. It's kind of like playing games has experience. And like, I just kind of thought it as like, you know, when I start here, my progression forward is going to be like an experience and going to document it and journal it. And and yeah, See, so Zephyr's beautiful. experience. Zephyr. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to ask. When are you going to rename your podcast The Zephyr's Experience? <laughs> so I, I was really struggling hard to figure out a name for it because um, I was going to do like Zephyr's XP podcast or like some like something show. And then I just randomly said The Zephcast, like it just podcast yeah, like and that. Zephyr put I together. Like that, really. And every, everyone I, in my chat was like, do that, do that. I'm like, oh, it sounds terrible. And everyone's like, no, like it doesn't. It. I, oh, I like great. it more than The Zephyr's Experience just because right. they might think you're trying to take like Joe the Rogan. Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, but by the way, I am a terrible number one Zephyr's fan because I uh, I work with a guy named Zephyr. And so really? I was, yes. And so I was today years old when I found out your first name isn't Zephyr. <gasps> I've never, I've never actually seen like any social media I've seen. It's Zephyr's XP. I'm like, cool. Good enough for me. And 
it, in my defense, it also comes from a basis of like, I don't really care what people identify themselves as. If you want to tell me that your name is Elaine and to call you Elaine from now on, I'm like, cool, Elaine, what's up? You want to grab a beer? Awesome. <laughs> and so like, if you said your name was Zephyrs, I'm like, cool, Zephyrs. Good enough for me. So I never, it was more of a point of like, it's probably your first name or it's what you want to go by. Good enough for you me. Fortune Cookie's name isn't actually Fortune Cookie. What? It is now. It is, it is now. I think well, that's actually oh, good. I think there's only one person that knows my like actual name, and, and I um <laughs> yeah. So I don't know why. Like I just oh I just... no, we've had this talk. I'm sorry, we've had this talk. I'm I'm dumb. Please continue. No, you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> and it's it's driven. It's it's almost at the point where because like my wife is like you just tell people. I'm like. But it's honestly kind of fun at this point to it's not. It's a fun game. It totally is. is Especially Fortune. Fortune's always like, it's like David or Joe or Bob. I'm like, keep going. I'm David. Keep going. Uh, so I'm like, <laughs> I have Rumpelstiltskin. Is it Alan? We, no, we, uh, I forgot. <laughs> no, one, of, of them. <laughs> one, one of my first times in your stream, we talked about this and I forgot because <laughs> I'm okay, like, oh, this is a cool game. What's his name? And I like tried to bribe your wife to tell me <laughs> and she was like, nope, won't tell. And then I forgot all about it. Like in my hectic schedule, I'm like, that's really neat. And it's gone. <laughs> I, I remember going the extra mile too, like setting up my PayPal for like donations and stuff, like switching it to a business account specifically. So it would just show Zephyr's XP. And then I remember <laughs> donating to myself just to see if any alerts would pop up for it. So I was, yeah. and not for like any, I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't know why. I guess it's just kind of like a, the thought of like a stage name or like, like mm -hmm. authors, yeah. like, um, you know, like, who was it who did Harry Potter? J.K. Rowling? J.K. Rowling's. Yeah, yeah, like that's not her like actual name. She has like an actual name. So yeah, it's kind of like, went that thought of just like, well, I guess if I'm going to do online stuff, should probably have like a stage name of some kind. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And honestly, I still remember for the longest time I was torn on, do I want people to know my actual name is David? Yep. And I wasn't planning on ever saying that. The problem is when we're playing couch co-op games, right, so one hard month into streaming, yeah, my brother isn't going to be like, hey, twin one, do this. He's, or like, twin one, don't do that. He's going to be like, David, what are you doing? Yeah. And it's our... Do you, so, do you, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. And that I was going to say, do you know the tragic thing? And I, it was one of those, like, I did so much, but I didn't realize it until it was pointed out, like, last month in my stream. I give up my own name frequently because when I tell my... Or when I, like, do something dumb in a game and I'm like no instead of saying like oh why did i do that instead of go kyle stop because it's almost like i hear like a coach or one of my fire instructors yelling at me like kyle cut it out yeah and so instead of telling myself like oh kyle you idiot kyle why did you do this kyle step it up and then my chat finally pointed out it might have been fortune i forget who exactly it was, it was like yeah you refer to yourself in the third person a lot i'm like <laughs> <laughs> whoops uh, <laughs> i want to mention uh, as, as I said, my brother and I have been competing in uh, Smash Bros. competitively for a long time. You think we'd actually be good at the game, but regardless. Um, Overrated. Yeah. So the first tournament we ever went to that was out of state, so not in New Mexico, not local, uh, was a tournament called Genesis. And it's a very popular series, but it was actually the first iteration of it in Antioch, California. My brother and I went to this tournament, and I promise I have a, a good reason for this random, random oh, no, story no, no, Yeah. <laughs> um, but we went to this, like, we'd watched all these pro players, these top players online and always like fantasize what it'd be like to play against them and hang out with them. And maybe we'll be friends with them one day. And we go to this tournament, absolutely trash at this game. Like we're not good. We're like, there, there's like 500 competitors and we're ranked 600th, like that type of thing. We're just, we're not even, not even competition for the worst one there. And we get there the day before the tournament and uh we immediately just were ourselves we're outgoing we're talkative cool and we're we're hanging out with all these top players we're hanging out and before the tournament's even started the day before we're already friends with everybody there we're just laughing talking hang out and uh we were doing card magic and sleight of hand for everybody because you know we used to do that one of us still does and something i always loved asking people was where did your 
gaming handle? Where did your gamer tag come from? Because you hear the stories. <laughs> and so I ask this to people from all around the world, because it's not just uh, people from the US who are competing here, people from Sweden, Japan, Australia, Canada, Mexico, of course, you know, nearby countries too. Uh, all these, and so it's fascinating hearing about like, yo, know, the upbringing, how it started, like a uh, one player named, uh, he goes by Toph, and it turns out his name is Christopher, and he didn't like, whenever, yo, know, he was called Chris for a while, he started actually instead going by the Toph. middle part of that, Toph. So instead of Chris Topher, he just went by Toph, and now that's, everybody knows him, knows him as Toph. He's well-known, well-respected. Lucky. So something, <laughs> something we would do from that first tournament, it wasn't something we had planned. It was just something that uh, I think I did it during a magic trick. I'm like, I like this, I'm going to do that. And it became what we are known for anytime we travel to a tournament is I would do a magic trick and I would say, hey, you know that whole like every magician does it where they say, yeah, sign a card or put something on a card. We're gonna lose it in the deck and it's gonna magically reappear somewhere. Like, hey, it's in my back pocket. Hey, it's in your purse, it's in this, whatever. We actually did that. And all these pro players started signing cards and you know, glare, you won't really be able to see but these are some of the top players around the world. Here's a funny little thing though. Every single person who signed a card, I heard the story behind their name, every single one of them. But many people, when they would get to that point, you would think it's like, oh, well, he's just asking the top players. He only really cares about, yo, know, these upper echelon. No, that's a bold faced lie. I didn't care who you were. If it was your first tournament, if you've never been to a tournament before, if you're, if this is the last tournament you've ever gone to, I kind of want to showcase something because I love gamer tags. I love finding out about them. <laughs> this is my collection <laughs> right there. Wow. That is about seven, I would say seven or eight decks of playing cards worth. And there are very few repeating names in here. There are some, I will say there are some, but very, very, very few. I love finding out and asking, hey, where did your gamer tag come from? It's really cool. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's so weird through Twitch. I don't want to be like, Pajama Princess Daisy, where did you get that name <laughs> from? Part of it's self-explanatory, but yo, I right. don't want to feel like rude. But when there's magic involved, when I'm like, yeah, put your gamer tag on there. And we actually always said, put your gamer tag and add something special, mm -hmm. something unique, whether it's a drawing, a quote, something else. And people put amazing quotes on there, uh, some amazing drawings. I'm trying to find one really quick. I'm like, ah, Cash I'm not seeing anything. That guy yeah. Cash put uh, two Star Fox quotes on there. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can't let you do that. Nice. Um, one of them, uh, Chalknader, an old school Ice Climbers player, actually drew Ice Climbers Ooh. on his. That is wow, so that's cool. that drawing, I forgot about that. Yep. And that is just something. So that's why I had to flip the script. I had to ask you, where did yours come from? I love hearing those stories. I love asking those questions. And some of these cards I've had for 12 years now, and I'm never getting rid of them ever. Mm -hmm. It's cool to it hear just like, like how people's brains connect mm -hmm. like words together and just like, that makes a good name. I'm going to take that. That's Super right? fascinating. And some of them, the stories behind it, you're like, I never in a thousand years, you literally could have put a million dollars in front of me and said, uh, if before, like, yo, in the next 10 years, if you tell me how I got my gamer tag, I will give you all like a million dollars. And some of them are like, lucky, very, very, very well known <laughs> Fox player, top player. Uh, he got his name lucky, not because he's lucky, but because his friend growing up had this really cool dog named Lucky. And when he went to a tournament and he needed a gamer tag, for some reason, his friend's dog from his childhood popped in his mind and that's where Lucky came from. I'm like, what the heck was that story? There that is, is awesome. Out, out of nowhere. So yeah. I, here would be one for you guys. If A1 Twins was not your username, was there another username you almost went by? Ooh, okay. Because there okay. was one for me specific... and I'm so happy I didn't use it now. <laughs> so is this specifically for our stream A1 or for our competitive gamer tags? Uh, either Twin or. Twin A? Either or. So my brother mentioned this earlier, uh, Frost and Nemesis. Who got what? We don't know. Back you were when Frost, we played... I was Nemesis. Okay, that's I remember. It. Thank you. Back when we played Need for Speed, it was like... Hot Pursuit. Hot Pursuit, yeah. Oh, Hot Pursuit was it. Yeah. We played Need for Speed since the original. We love that game series. The Need but, for Speed. Yeah, the original one where you could do uh, the first person and see the steering wheel without needing cheat codes you know, for a while. My dad um, and I used to and, play that on the PS1 back in the day. Nice! <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Was. But on, uh, on Hot Pursuit, there were some of the random 
uh, CPU, like the AI names and Frost and Nemesis were on there and they were so cool. Those were almost our gamer tags, not memorable, not memorable at all. Uh, Kyle, can you think of anything for the stream name though? So, no, we had so many that we went yeah, with too, but, but it was just kind of dirty list. It was throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and nothing was sticking. Yeah, I, no. It, oh God, I'm, I'm I, trying to think I, of I, like- I want to say like NM twins or uh, twins 505 would have been, with like twins was going to be part of it regardless. There's no getting rid of that. That was the base. Oh, that was, that was the Donkey Kong one because we're yeah, David Kyle, DK. So it's going to be the oh, DK twins. That was that, it. That was a DK twins. Uh, I was the remember. was like a, a front runner, but we didn't like it. Yeah, just so something that, felt off. Do you think yeah, it would have been like const constrictive to Donkey Kong in a sense, maybe, or maybe oh. Drift King? Oh, Drift That's King. Tokyo Drift. Drift King. <laughs> yeah, and we're not drifters in any way, mm. shape, or form. And I like Donkey Kong. I've played Donkey Kong Country one and two more times than I can count, but there's not a chance you would catch me strictly having a donkey kong theme related stream it just it yeah. wouldn't work so that, it i i still remember too like we were throwing around all these ideas and everybody was pitching like what about this what about this and i i just remember i was sitting there on the couch mall why not the a1 twins and then we were just okay. torn to include the for yeah. the a1 twins or just a1 yep. twins and it was like it was a pretty quick decision yeah that one yeah that we chopped out we knocked off the the pretty quick so i'm gonna ask what was yours before you're like yeah zephyr's like me. You're like i'm so glad i didn't go with it now we gotta know um, now we gotta know i i use one of those like random name generators where you type in like a base word like twins or zephyr or whatever and then it kind of like matches things to it and one, I, I created the Twitch account for it, created the e Gmail and everything. And then I showed wifey and she was like, please God, do not do that. <laughs> it was, it came out King Zephyr 13. And I don't know why I was just like, I like 13. That's probably my favorite number seven and 13. And yeah. and yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like so happy. Cause I mean, if you put King in front of any of your names or queen that immediately can have kind of a, yeah, it can, it can go several different paths of yeah. the hubris. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where's the humble? <laughs> exactly. And also the 13 can lead to a lot of different thoughts as well, because 13 is usually associated with uh, unlucky right. or misfortune. Or some people lead down that path, especially if you're like kind of very Halloween focused, where you like that dark, that mystery, you know, the Ouija board, the number 13. So that could also kind of lead to where like, oh, I wonder if he's down this path and then we come in and we see this beautiful serene background and this this voice that can relax like yo angels and be like <laughs> that doesn't look like yo 13's appropriate on his name I, is it so I think fascinating how like like for some people or in some cultures or some parts of the world like something as simple as a number can just be like such an immediate because when i when i it's weird to say this now that I don't work there anymore, but when I did have my job and was like selling like cell phones and stuff, mm -hmm. um, there'd be some people who would just be like, I don't want those numbers because they're associated with bad luck and in mm -hmm. where I live in my culture, whatever. And it's just like, that's really interesting. Like, cause I just see numbers as just number. numbers as just numbers, you know? Yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, it's very, very fascinating. It's Super true. Fascinating. And it's, uh, two little things about that. One, just kind of quick random thing. I remember seeing online, it's like, uh, if your, what was it? If your uh, email or if your like Twitch handle or anything like that uh, ends in 67, I'm going to assume you're, you know, like, what would that be? 50? Like, yeah, you were born in the year 67. Yeah, born in year 67. Oh, yeah. If your if you're ends in 69, I'm going to assume you're 12. Ah. You know, that's, a, that's one of those numbers that's like, okay, or you're obviously a little hit. Yeah, exactly. 420. Cool. That, actually, that, that makes me think of uh, Taj and Wobbles, Dave, when they used <laughs> yeah. to team. So Hyper two, and... exactly. No, well, so these these two melee players, these legends, and they also and frequent. They, they stream and they're and, frequent in our chat. Yeah, um, but they, yeah. they were still are in many ways, but they were for a long time, two of the top upper echelon Smash Bros players. Mm -hmm. And so they intentionally made their, their team name back when team names were a thing at tournaments. It was like XXX underscore 
uh 420 oh, okay. underscore weed dragons right. weed sniper but yeah they were like weed dragons like, underscore 420 underscore well handle that you'd ever seen and they and, made that their team names and, so people and, are gonna be like Pfft. Yeah, it's like you oh, look God. at the day, it's like this is the freest win. Okay, so we basically have a buy first round. Let's and beat up these nobodies. These two, like, yeah, these two legends and these two tops here. They uh, literally go on random and still like just yeah. destroying your so, world. Something uh, circling back to the number thing though, uh, my job in banking, I regularly open up accounts for people. And we basically have uh, account numbers kind of like predetermined to make sure it doesn't match with anyone else's, obviously. Sure, sure. And I'll pull it out. I'm like, oh yeah, and yo, here's your account number. And there have been some that end in like, you know, 666, which a lot of people, of course, you know, biblical side, number of the beast. And I've had people say, I can't have that one. I'm like, we opened your account. You saw this number at the top already. It's already kind signed. of locked in. Right. Not like, say what? Yeah, and they're like, close it down. I want a new one. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, but the other side of that is we regularly have to get people's email addresses, you know, if they want to do online banking, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are 16, 17, 18 years old who have very professional email addresses, first name, dot, last name, first name, middle initial, last name, first initial, last name, things like that. Things that you would put on a resume with pride. And then like the 50 then year olds we, with the unicorn 22 exactly. at AOL. Like, at yes. <laughs> yes. I, like I've had someone's like honey babe and stuff like that. I'm looking, I'm like, all right, so grandma, what else are we doing today? <laughs> and, you know, it's like taco lover. And I'm like, yes. uh-huh. And uh, so you own your own company. You said, is it by any chance you own a food truck? No, I do, you know, stock portfolios. So I'm like, uh-huh. You don't say. You're still paying for AOL, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Use it for the oh, internet. The amount of people who uh, still pay for AOL and give me AOL email addresses. I'm like, Gmail, uh, Yahoo, Hotmail. Let's, uh, let's, let's, come on. Let's diversify. I had that conversation with a lot of customers about like Comcast emails because a lot of like mm -hmm. older customers would have like at Comcast.net. And I'm like, I'm like the mo if you ever leave Comcast, your your email's gone. Like, so mm -hmm. why are you doing, why are you self putting yourself in a position that could be a problem yeah. down the road? Yeah. So any of the younger generation who's watching this right now, if you stuck around, we're almost two hours in. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hopefully you've been you. But please make yourself an appropriate email address. I actually, Again, my brother's a firefighter. People have talked about that. Very, very, very few people ask me questions related to banking. And I'm always here to answer those questions. I promise you. I always tell my customers there's no stupid questions, only stupid answers, at least when it comes to that field. <laughs> but I will give you two very strong pieces of advice. One, have a good, respectful email, not just for your bank. We don't care. And then we'll, we'll crack jokes about it behind, you know, behind the scenes, but that's about it. But for like your job and everything, it goes a very long for way. I resume. Promise you, I promise you, resumes have been thrown out because of email addresses alone. I promise that faithfully. Oh yeah. The other thing that I will say, if you are young, or not even if you're young, if you're in your twenties, if you're in your thirties, memorize your social security number. I cannot stress yes. having that memorized. How many people I know who come in to open up a bank account and I say, okay, what is your social? And they're like. I don't know. I'm like, well, we need that. Or they'll pull out the card saying, oh, I don't know, but I have the card. I'm yes. like, that's great. Memorize this. Right. Don't carry we, this on you. We, right. we have to ask people for their social whenever we're doing like the, you know, EMS calls and stuff like that. Like, and this is, of course, our not as severe patients, because if it's something bad, like, oh, you got shot. We don't really ask them personal questions like, hey, what's your past medical history? It's like, cool, you got to go to the doctor like yeah. five minutes ago. But people that it's not as severe and we've got time and we got to take wait for the ambulance to get there. It's like, great, what's your date of birth? What's your social security number? And it's not like there's always the people like, I don't want to tell you. It's like, cool, they'll get it at the hospital. Yeah. But there's so many people. It's like, I don't know. It's like you're 50 or 60 and you've had to do it for or give it out several times. I've never known it. And I uh, learn it. Now, another important thing I'm going to add because fraud is very real. Don't give it to anybody unless it is a legitimate situation. Yeah. Like you are in a bank opening account or you have a legitimate first responder above you saying, hey, we need this. If you get a phone call from somebody saying, yeah, I just need to verify you. What's your social? You hang up the phone. Or like you just want a free flight to the Bahamas. Just enter right? your oh credit info you, and social. Yeah. And 
no. You just yeah, need to you need to send us a uh, money order or some Target gift, card, gift cards. Gift cards no, ones no, no, no. Said, buy the gift card, scratch off the back, send us the photo okay. because then they redeem it and there's nothing you could do. Hey, uh, I, I, da so David, I, I hate to interrupt you, but we've been trying to reach you about your vehicle's extended warranty. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you would go there. I will be honest, and this is going to hit kind of a somber part of a very upbeat stream. Fraud is real. And I've seen an insane uptick of fraud, especially in the last year with COVID and everything happening and people falling for it. And it's not just the elderly. There's that connotation that, oh, only the elderly fall for it. No. We see it of all age ranges, all walks of life. If you get a phone call and they start asking you for your passwords, your account numbers, stuff like that, hang up that phone. It's just, it's a scam. Please don't do that. And I mean this, anybody who's still watching right now, thank you again. If you ever have questions about anything of that, ask me, reach out to me. I don't care if it's on my stream or if you message me on you know, Twitter, or on Discord, or anything else, ask because I will answer. I don't care. I will flat out tell you if you were being scammed or if it's you know, legitimate, if you have quite, there's also this crazy stigma. And if either of you ever experienced this, feel free to tell me of people and movies and TV don't help with this. People are scared of banks for some reason. They think that bankers are these like robotic people in suits and ties. Whenever I'm opening an account for a 16, 17, 18 year old, I immediately, one of the first things I do is try to find common ground with them. And my big one is I'm a gamer. I, I bring up video games. I find a, a neat little way to sneak it in. So it's not like, hey, you want to open an account? Cool. I play video games. What do you do? <laughs> no, that's, that's terrible. But like, I find a cool little way to sneak it in. Uh, and you'd be amazed the amount of people. You play video games? I know, right? The balding hair makes you think otherwise. I get it. It's cool. Uh, and a lot of people, too, are music. I actually was talking with a kid that he got a chance to go out to California and uh, be part of actually a, a pretty big album that's coming out he has a small part on a song i'm like dude that is freaking nuts and the whole time i'm talking with him he's just relaxed and chill and because yo we find that because people are scared to go into banks because they think like oh god i'm gonna get you know told no i'm going not just come in come talk to us we're human uh, we all have hobbies uh if i could give a piece of advice for my job learn Listen. cpr yeah get cpr certified there you go it's that's, not that's that one of those like you you won't know you need it until you need it and no, when you, need you do it. need also, it you'll be thankful you have it also yep. learn how to properly check a pulse i can't tell you how many times don't use you've run phone. where it's like they're dead they're dead cpr is in progress we're like okay it's a working code we got to do this we go in tell the person who's frantically doing cpr on a loved one it's like okay stop for a second take a minute to make a minute let's check and i'll go in and don't even have to do a pulse check once they stop compressions you hear <laughs> It's like, okay, well, first of all, they're breathing, which means you they have it. a pulse. You yes. did it. You did you your job. Now back up. Yeah. All right. Not, not to take away, Dave. I just wanted to do a cheap no, segue. Good. I got whatever, man. <laughs> you talk about streaming video games, motivational quotes, and I'm like, fraud is real. You've been scammed. <laughs> so I'm going to flat out tell people, and again, I tell all <laughs> ages on there, fraud is real. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when everybody will have it happen to them. Sometimes it's really small. The bank catches it. You don't even realize and you don't lose a moment of sleep. And sometimes it's so big, it makes national headlines. Banks also, banks and credit unions put a ton of money into their fraud departments to help stop it. Mm -hmm. let also, us know don't, you don't have your password be password. Don't do that. Please, God, no. <laughs> password, uh, you, God, and, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. I flat out tell people, Bankers or bank employees, uh, and this, mind you, when I say banks, I mean bank, credit union, just financial institutions. We do not, we cannot see your password or the four digit pin for your debit card. We cannot see it. We will not ask you for it. If ever you get a call from your bank saying, yeah, there's something weird going on on your account. First, I have to verify you. What is your online banking ID and password? That is a scam. You hang up. Please, for the love of everything holy, hang up that phone. It's a scam. I've also learned so like it's it's a really good idea too to use like a password manager. Um, yeah, whether it's like if um, like I have an iPhone, so like it's built right into it. But you can have it set nice. like super complicated passwords that you, no one would ever be able to to remember, and mm -hmm. it just uses like your face to automatically scan you in. Um, yeah. Or even like I know on computers, there's like password manager extensions you can have, so you don't have mm -hmm. you only need like one 
password for that and then it will have the passwords for your banking and your finances and your websites and everything so password yeah, managers for the win long, you're right that is that is a huge one on there it really is it's it's honestly it's fantastic we, <laughs> we saw it a lot in like cell phones because like if somebody were to lose their phone number the amount of things tied to that like their email if somebody loses their phone number in their in their email like they can get into everything they can get into banking mm -hmm. they can reset passwords they can reset social media stuff and just like everything could be compromised just One from fact, your phone number that so, actually kind of happened i don't know if you remember the big target hack that happened where target michaels and yeah. a lot of other yeah. Uh, that was uh, like what seven eight years ago now mm -hmm. i want to say i forgot about uh, that i think some fraudsters were doing because they got a ton of information they found out they part of that info is they were able to access the people's online banking and they were actually changing the person's phone number to match the scammers number so when the banks were calling the fraud department saying yeah did you do this the scammers like that was me ha 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 and so <laughs> uh, banks for a while had to stop calling if there was any fraud notice they had just put a block on there no calling because they couldn't risk calling and find, and it be the fraudster who actually answered the phone. Well, that that reminds me of that TikTok I sent you, David. Oh, Seth, yeah. I'm gonna we're since we're friends on TikTok, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you one after oh, this. That it's, I showed that to my coworkers. We were laughing. It's, it's a bank related it, one, and it's everyone can appreciate it. Yeah. It's so. Uh, so because I know we're approaching the two hour mark, I did have oh, yeah. a piece of trivia for David, and I just want to throw it out there. Oh, yeah. So anybody listening isn't like you know what was the oh, question? So. <laughs> So, Dave, this was brought up because you mentioned Wolf. Oh, yeah. There have been four people since the start of the year or since they found this stream who have not missed one of our streams regardless. Oh, dang. Fortune Cookie, Na definitely, right? Fortune Name those four people. Fortune Cookie is one of them. Wolf of oh, the yeah. Apocalypse is one. Panda. I'm assuming nope. Panda. Panda's really? not one of them. Wow. Okay. She actually missed go. last night's stream. Oh, uh, sad day. <laughs> Four people. Shout out. I'm to Panda. trying to go through. Shout out. Still, to Panda. still love. Still love. Yeah, Nothing but love. Best uh, mod on Twitch. I love, and I will, I love our I lurkers. Will. I love anybody that's in there. Let's see who has not missed one. Now I'm trying to go through people who have hopped in chat. Mrs. Olgin. Mrs. Olgin. I thought that's the one you might miss. Okay. But the, la the last one. The number four will surprise you. Yeah, it's like, I didn't want to say it, but number four, I feel like number four should be an obvious one, but they tend to lay a little lower than you would think. Okay, I'll I'll bite. I, I give up. Who's... Who Lao or Lao Wei. Oh my God, that was so obvious. I was actually chatting the with person whose Lau name Wei. we don't know how to pronounce correctly and they just say ah, you're close enough yeah, just, call, <laughs> just call me loud yeah like, i was like i i invited him i'm assuming him to like the birthday jackbox streams like no i'm good just watching invited them to random stuff it's like i'm good just watching this is entertaining i'm like you know what's huh. funny is i made this character in the rpg game i'm doing and when i asked Lau, i'm like yeah send me a reference send me something send me like an idea they just said, make me a fern. I'm like, all right, is that some slang term that I just don't know? Because I'm a greener. <laughs> oh, awesome. you mean like a fern tree? Yeah, like the tree. Like, make me a fern. I'm like, so green. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I made uh, Lau's character. I, I want to say his character, but again, you'll want to be careful just in case. Got Pretty sure it's for everybody. He... Pretty sure, but no, just in case. I made Lau's character, and Lau's all, that is perfect. That is better than I could have imagined. I'm like, are you sure? I will change anything <laughs> on here that you're just so easy. Right now. <laughs> Fun fact, Zeph, I still need to make your character in it still. So if you have a reference you want me to use, if you want me to make him look like you, or if you want something out there crazy, it's up to you. The world is I, your oyster. I immediately would say completely whatever pops in your head. Because for stuff like that, I find it way more fascinating. Like, I would say it's it's easy to copy the person and yeah. kind of give them the oh, attributes right. they already yeah. know but it, i feel like it'd be more fun if like just in your head you're like what is zeph in my head what like what would i think if maybe a different yeah. character or a different gender or a different <laughs> race or a different species like i feel like a that'd be fun. bard oh, right bard. so <laughs> I think about that game that i'm making is uh i'm completely ripping off games that my brother and i have made in the past oh heart with wings um is that the, the kind of general premise, just so you kind of have an idea of whenever your character's made, what your role is, because you, you have a role in it, is uh, each stream, 
is its own town and the viewers the followers in there are the people in that town it's just a fantasy world I magic sword you know, that kind of stuff so your town will be in it uh and you will be an optional boss you are an optional mm. boss you are someone that there can be a fight against now i gotta freaking figure out how i'm going to make your character i was planning on music bard something along those lines because yo ukulele <laughs> make, make it like uh jimmy from uh south park oh, yeah uh, the stick of truth <laughs> where's the bard and he has that really bad uh, speech impediment but mm -hmm. uh, um and so i'm going to do yours and i haven't even come close to making that part of the game i'm nowhere near that but i promise you faithfully when i am making your character and your area and your optional boss battle i am going to be sending you stuff like is this okay dude i'm Please excited i'm super excited i've i've, I've got ideas for uh zeph's fight actually yep. Oh, she will you. be a character in there too, but her name at this point will still be Wifey. Wifey. <laughs> so, Wifey, but she'll be in your area. People are going what to about know who's Golden Wifey. wifey. Golden, Golden Wifey. wifey. Yeah, that's a good one too. According you know, to Fortune, Wifey be... is Lifey. <laughs> yeah. I, the, oh God, there's going to be the waifus in ours, which is like, you know, Fortune, Kira, Panda, all of them are the team Sash. waifus. Oh my God, that, that list grows. There's also honorary waifus that are the males that want to be a waifu. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm it's, not allowed to be a waifu. I've asked several times. It's kind of funny with this game because I wasn't planning on making it on stream until I talked about it. And then people started getting hooked like, what have you made? What have you done? Is my character in it yet? Have you made my character? What's going on with this? I'm like, all right, I'll make it on stream then. That saves me the problem of you know try, finding time to program oh, this. I gotta work <laughs> on mine. Yeah, it's funny, but I, I guess people super hard cool time. and super unique. Like I haven't heard of anybody else doing anything like that. So like I'm really really excited. It's not gonna be done until like end of this year at best. But I promise, when it's done, I'll send it to you to be able to play. You don't you don't have to play it on stream. Just play it. Oh dude, I'm <laughs> just check out your life. This I'm is excited. terrible. Um, I did have a couple questions just because I away. did want to, to at least kind of ask a um, couple ones. I think that'd be really interesting. Go back. Go back. Um, what, here's one that I think would be super fun. What has been some of your biggest highlight moments since you started streaming? Ooh. Uh, okay. So for me, I got two it will, off the top of my head. It, it will always be. Uh, personal connections made and like mm -hmm. people who have reached out and told okay. us like hey you've like somehow made a difference help them help positive them through impact. something emotional positive impact uh they're so powerful so, when people oh, do that or they're, they're like they're, i look forward to your streams and you're like what yeah. <laughs> yeah there there's two immediately that come to mind um one that I'll mention right out the gate is Q-Bear. The reason I bring up Q-Bear is he was the first person to, first of all, uh, he wasn't the first one to subscribe to our channel that belongs to Jesus, uh, who found our stream when it was terrible right. and hung around and helped, which was still nutty, built our Discord. Um, but Q-Bear was one of the first people that it, it really jumped from a streamer viewer relationship to like, this person feel right. he's a friend and i could like reach out to him and be like hey dude i'm going to be in your part of the world want to go grab a beer kind of and, kind of uh, thing his, uh, his college graduation too i mean we couldn't <laughs> make it but he invited yeah. us and see that was huge yeah it was so that that first leap from like like i said streamer viewer to feel like we're friends um and the other person i'm not I'm not going to say names because although they've been very open about it, uh, I still just, Respect just in case, privacy. just, just in case. Um, but an individual was in a very, very, very dark place. And, I uh, unfortunately had a plan, had letters written, was planning on doing the worst. I, uh, and just beforehand, and I, I don't know what, like the drive was but they reached out just to kind of like talk you know not not about what was going on but i had i had no idea and we just talked and we laughed and i joked and uh you know said some of my stupid little motivational quotes that i like to throw out there all the while i had no idea um and it wasn't until a few weeks later that they reached out to me 
uh, in a very, very personal way, very long letter written to me uh, saying like, hey, just so you know, this, this, yeah, this was going to happen and you helped yep. uh, deter me away from that. And I cried. Yep. I bawled my and eyes that, out. So, you know, when I say our stream could end tomorrow, our stream could go away tomorrow, and it still would be one of the best moments of my life for those. Another one I want to add that kind of adds to that, uh, which was one of the first two I thought. One was personal connections. The other one is we've actually done two charity streams, and we do it once a year, uh, mm -hmm. and it, for the National Suicide Hotline. And each year we set a goal and both years we've shattered that goal by leaps bounds tripling it uh each time and those to me i feel like on such a personal level because everybody everybody in some way shape or form has been impacted by suicide uh whether it's family friends just somebody that you happen to know in passing and it, it never is easy and to know that you know, we've raised money for that and people actually came to our stream and donated and gave their words, you know, like gave their stories of this happened to me, this happened to somebody I know, this happened, you know, whatever it may be. And those parts were huge. And so I, I, I kind of find it funny how you went on that personal one and it kind of segued right into what I was twins. Yeah, what I was thinking. Uh, Mind melt. And now let's, let's step away from the super emotional one. I One that uh, I want to just kind of add is those big like oh my gosh moments uh would be honestly one of the first times we had a game night uh like one of those jackbox night stuff like that that for me i was like oh man we did it because there were people lining up to play and it actually had a queue of people waiting of like okay well i'm next after after somebody drops on this person after somebody drops this person we're going to do two or three games in and then you've got to step out like a nice rotation system going and I'm like, I, growing up when we were really young, we didn't have a lot of friends. We were very shy, very kind of reclusive, uh, and we didn't have very many people to play games with. And to now know that we have all these people who want to play games with us, who want to jump in, join us. I'm like, man, I'm going to cry. Like, oh, oh Lord. I yeah. put it out there saying, hey, we're going to play, yo, know, Left 4 Dead 2 and first come, first serve, who wants in? All right, all eight spots are full. Took less than an hour. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. That, so because we, when, when we first started streaming or the idea of streaming, literally the conversation was like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we got a couple viewers? Oh man, maybe, maybe we'll get like, I researched and read what affiliate was because I didn't know. It was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we hit affiliate one day? Oh, that's the dream. It We're could happen make mega someday. Money. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not even that. It was just like, what if we got a couple subscribers? Yeah. Like our, our goals and ambitions were so small because to us that felt realistic. What if we were, you know, able to, to get just like four or five consistent viewers? Oh, that'd be amazing. And it, it took a while to get there because that first year, again, we didn't know what we were doing, but we were so happy along the way. Less than a month, which kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, we hit, we hit, we hit affi affiliate in two weeks. Yeah, but it it didn't feel like it was a truly justified earned one until that like first year was yeah, up, and then we it, started feeling like streamers. It was because we got a huge raid from Armada right out the gate, and so people followed just because it was like, hey, Armada says trust these twins, and uh, so we're like, yeah, we hit affiliate, but we didn't earn and affiliate, like and and now it's one of those like cool i throw on a stream and i get 30 viewers um i think my best stream that wasn't or it was Didn't organic happen. like no raids no no juicy zephyr raid thanks again buddy i love you for that one day <laughs> uh uh but i hit i think it was 91 viewers was my peak and i was like i couldn't sleep i was grinning ear to ear i'm like yeah I'm doing it this is the best and so it's like just that that feeling of growth that we're still getting like just ah uh, warms my heart that like people care enjoy the stream enough and want to stick around and let us entertain them like i love that feeling so much it's also right. cool to have like a lot of those uh, like nothing against 
like some of the like newer viewers or anything, but like those OGs who have been there from the yes. very beginning, like and seeing the progress <laughs> along the whole way. Like I actually had my first one year subscriber i think yesterday or two days ago and um fortune is like right behind him like fortune is probably like a few days away but it's like oh my god like it's just it's it's crazy Unreal. to see like three months six months 12 months like a year it's like what the those, hell I'm like, it's streaming that long what the <laughs> right? heck is it's it's really interesting hearing that affiliate story though because mine was mm -hmm. like polar opposite it took me two months to hit affiliate because i did I, and this would be some advice too for people listening or watching that like want to grow with streaming is i kind of did things the wrong way where i spent my first two months mostly just grinding playing video games for a lot of hours every day and like didn't really mm -hmm. network or interact with anyone i was just like if i'm playing video games i guess they'll come oh, right not yeah, at all yeah. whereas like it some people cool. like fortune cookie you know who is like a really big important person in like multiple communities who she says yes. like i'm gonna start streaming because you all have inspired me to want to do it like she hits affiliate in like a week like yeah, super like, fast because like she, like she already has all the people there wanting to support her and she's done all the networking and all the friendship building first she did it in a good legitimate Dave, your, your mic cut out by the way she did it in a good legitimate honest way uh where she didn't like force it on people where she's like yeah i support you by the way i'm gonna start streaming so you're gonna support me right right right, right, right. it was very I, natural honest way of going about it i actually credit her and I, I say this frequently we have the the point redemption for give compliment and when it comes to her i always have to include that like along with the growth of our channel of me working every day to figure out how can i make it look good what can i talk about to be entertaining she was the one who really taught me the importance of networking like i knew the concept i knew it was important and i thought in my mind i'm like i am networking we're we're doing it and then all of a sudden she's we're like raiding, hey, right that's not yeah we're, we're raiding and i go on other channels occasionally and just kind of talk for yeah, a bit or... and, and then she's over here like hey you should check out uh my friend zephyr's xp he's brand new and he just hit affiliate trust me he's cool i'm like cool and i go in there and you're really nice and i subscribe because i'm like i like this guy a lot he's really cool like hey uh if you like him you should talk to uh zach zach's good people i'm like okay cool ice beams is good people I'm like oh my god and i go to these streams and they're like oh i love fortune cookie she's the sweetest and she did it without intent of like promoting herself yeah, because most of the time she wasn't streaming uh Sorry. but even even now that she does it's like she's so good at just making friends and networking and in turn i'm like okay take note take lessons make friends go to other streams with the intent of making friends joining the community and then do it organically don't go there with the intent of like i'm gonna get them to follow me right and right. uh she, oh she's so good at it yep. so just because you know time is money i know that we're spending a lot or take up a lot of your time you said no, you had a good. few questions oh yeah yeah sorry oh, no you're good you're good guys um and let me know too like if if you guys need to head out because i'm i'm fine kind of going a little bit extra if you are so yeah, just I've, let me know i've got guys. i've got time dude i don't go to work till oh monday i've got a normal-ish schedule so yeah <laughs> weekend hype so I, I guess with the highlights of streaming on the flip side conversely what's been some of the most challenging and frustrating moments you've encountered since you've started streaming um ooh, outside of that let's let's not cheat on this one let's take out that first year of sure yeah uh, let's let's go like since last we said we started um so challenging moments uh admittedly for me I, I don't want to make this sound terrible on here, but a tough one for me was getting back into streaming. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever my son was almost born, I, I had already made it well known. My brother and I had spoken about it. I was going to be taking a hiatus from streaming, and I didn't know how long if it was going to be three months, six months, a year. I, I truthfully wasn't sure. And my brother, being an absolute saint was like, okay, I'm holding down the fort. 
And honestly, that was part of the time period where you saw the stream shoot up in quality because he didn't need to lug his computer back and forth from my <laughs> place. In. He had it there on his off days to where he could, you know, build it up. But for me, I was watching the stream prosper. The stream actually did better without me there. And that was a, a very harsh reality for me of seeing like, do I even need to be there? Look at how great he's doing without me. And periodically, I would see people using our Discord voice chat, uh, Wretched, Fortune Cookie, for example, some of them, and I would hop in, I would actually be driving home from work, uh, get on Discord on my phone, see that they're in there, and just quickly hop in just to say hi, and I would hear them be like, David, it's you, how are you doing? How's your son? How's he your does wife? exist. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got like five minutes, just wanted to say hi. And I would be like fighting back tears because I'm like, oh, do they actually want me around? And it was a, almost a depressing thing because I was so happy at home with my son. And I was kind of torn between, am I taking away time with my son to be able to stream? Do they even want me back on the stream? And that's where I came to the conclusion of I will only stream when my son is asleep because I, I don't want to miss any of these early years for him most important uh, years arguably oh yeah, yeah. I, my brother thankfully and chad have been absolutely awesome and i remember my first stream back my brother had actually come over and made sure i had obs set up properly i had the camera set up probably we had all these things going to make sure like do i have stuff on the background i put up a shelf that was not in this room which not that difficult to be honest i wish i gotta help you with a few more things still yeah, that's true. There, I've oh, got a ways to go. And my wife was even in here like, okay, these posters are really small and not that easy to see back here. Let's put them right here. Can I put any more? No, they're not really on camera. It doesn't really work. Uh, just trying to get that figured out. And my first stream back, I remember that sigh of relief when viewers started coming in and started chatting and that kind of like vindication, that, that, that validity right there of like, it's okay you're good they want you here but making that jump to actually coming back was like nerve-wracking for me so that's my number one of like <laughs> do you know what's funny support from like especially like hearing like wife being so supportive and you yeah. know brother being so supportive and, and like yeah. chat like that's it truly for anybody out there like that is one of the most powerful things you can do to help somebody is just be there for them right, um and just just be like if this is something you're passionate about I want you to be happy. I want you to keep going with it. And I'll be here if, if you need me, when you need me. So dude, hearing hearing how supportive everyone is, I'm so happy to hear that, man. Do, do you know what's funny? So, it, so big that I don't have to work anymore. And I'm like, honey, if I could make it big enough, you don't need to work, I'll do that in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. Dude, it's funny is like for that year or so, I felt like I kept dangling the carrot out for the viewers. They're like, when's twin one come back? Like he's coming back. And there were so many stream memes about it. like. Just memes of like twin A working Actually, hard carrying the stream and it's like <laughs> viewers face palm twin one, we love you. I I, I well, loved it. Memes too, like the Bojack Horseman one where you see him on a yacht just relaxing, and I'm like, twin one, and then it's the truck, like the tow truck pulling him all twin A. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I, I, one kind so, of thing to kind of jump on that, I think that would be really interesting. Did when you were mostly streaming, Kyle and David, uh -huh. you're kind of taking some time off. Did you guys ever talk about like turning it from the twins stream to just like Kyle's stream and if because obviously that hasn't happened what was kind of the the thing that stuck you both together to continue being the twins so uh I gotta, I gotta. There, there, there's actually a, a pretty interesting story my brother will need to elaborate on uh his thing uh Joe's funny I was gonna say David I thought the scary part for you coming back was going to be the fact that when you left we were like two three viewer average and you came back to like 30 plus viewer average yeah, that's different. Different. <laughs> really and and also my hardship banning trolls. No, uh <laughs> knowing that it's yeah. okay, you don't oh, need that don't viewer. Need no, uh but sorry. So so the, the actual because I, I love this question. I really love this question. In my mind, question. that is not a, that was never an option. Never. It will never be the twin A stream. It is nope. the twins. I I will it's hold on the four. <laughs> yeah, it's the brand. We've got the logo. The logo. Um, it's also the ride or die type thing where there will be no point in time that this will ever be just one of our streams ever in my eyes. 
God forbid something happens and I am not able to stream. I am I am done. I am I will never step foot in front of a stream camera again. I will never play a game again. My brother will still hold this down as the A1 twins. I guarantee that. It's I like guarantee yeah, that. he's 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 coming back he's coming back no i remember yep. there was one actual particular day and i don't remember what was going on in your life Dave. but uh we i wasn't even streaming i was i think i was at uh our local university like walking around playing pokemon go or stuff like that so something random i was doing that was outside of this or like i was like on a jog or it, i forget what and i knew from talking to david very briefly through text he was frustrated and like upset with a lot of other outside factors. I was like, this, this is going to pull into the stream. And I, uh, so I told him, I was like, well, Hey, just know that like on this side of things, don't worry about it. I've got yeah. it. You take all the time you need. And I meant it. I would have held down the fort a lot longer. And I have OBS pulled up and Panda just, uh, Popped oh. in. One sec. I see you. Okay, that's hilarious. Because yeah, I get one uh, of the but, podcast, she, I, like splash water on my face and then start streaming. But I did tell them I, it's going to be later, so yeah. no, no uh, worries. No rush. Oh crap! I forgot about that. I uh, so honestly, uh, hearing anyways, that though, like, was really cool. It's just, like it's like yeah. showing that it's just more like it's much deeper than just a stream name or a stream brand. Yeah. It's like no matter what, Our through brother. thick and thin, we're like brothers streaming. <laughs> no matter what happens like that is really cool to hear honestly yeah fortune is also now in the chat <laughs> <laughs> they're spamming hugs one thing i'm going to also uh add to that is it breaks my heart when i find out about twins that either don't get along with each other or they're like oh yeah we're twins cool and you know that's it my brother and i like we had those moments growing up where we hated each other we shared a room together we had all the same classes together and we worked together like we you cannot there's no person on this planet you can be around that often i'm sorry it's just it, it you know you need a break and we yeah. did not have that we never had that we lived in a small apartment we shared a room there was like no you go sleep on the couch this night like no we like it was awful but I look back at that fondly still because that helped build what we have today. Like there will always be the two of us, no matter what. My wife actually got mad at me uh, before we were even married and her and I were talking about uh, getting our own apartment together. And one of my big stipulations is I did not want to be too far away from my brother. I did not want to be on the other side of town even. I needed to be close. Yeah. But our first apartment ended up being in the same apartment complex that my brother and I currently lived in just on the other end. Nice. <laughs> so yes. Like less than a two minute walk. And even then I'm like, this is far. If anyone here watches uh, Bob's Burgers, there's twins on there, Ollie and Andy, I think. And when they're told they can't sit together, they start screeching and freak out. And that's <laughs> how we were. Like, I, I needed to be close. And I'll, yeah, we, we will always have do, that. Do you remember we were 10 or 11, I think. Um, and so we were raised for the first good chunk of our life by our granny, our grandma. And then our mom took over. Uh, but she was always in our lives and very yeah. active she just wasn't in a good position to take care of us Which is uh, and we, it, it's understandable and i love them both very very much uh but they realized that dave and i couldn't do anything without the other one um <laughs> and so they 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 separated us for a weekend well two weekends one weekend like i'm with granny david's with mom then rotate so we could have time apart and it was for a Saturday, like just a Saturday morning, dropped off, Sunday night, get returned. Mm -hmm. They're apart for pretty much a day. And that Saturday night, what did we do? We called each other on the phone. It was like, oh my God, so I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. <laughs> what did you do? I did yes. this. Like, and I just heard my mom like, get off the phone. You're gonna see it tomorrow. <laughs> we watched this movie and it was amazing. Oh, lucky I wanna see it. You're gonna see it. Yeah. And like, even apart, we had to talk with constantly. Yeah. Even still to this day, like, if there, we can't really go a very extended period without some type of communication on there. Uh, you know, I'm on vacation. I'm in Denver visiting family or something. I'm still like, yeah, what are you doing? Good luck with the stream. Have fun with this. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? How's work been? And it's, we're always going to have that bond, thankfully. I'm very, yeah. I always joke yeah. saying everyone 
gets a twin, everyone deserves a twin. I, I kind of mean it. I honestly like just hearing that, like that kind of relationship, I think is so incredibly rare and not even just like the twin aspect of it, but just yeah, like having that right. friend, like you are just always wanting to talk to always like it's it, if they disappeared from your life, just it would huh? like it would yeah, just yeah, be yeah. right right and i mean yeah. like of course some relationships can be similar to that but yeah. like for a lot of yes. people they don't even have a relationship that could match to that they don't even have like relationships with their family or even friends that could yeah. match so that's yeah. that's really cool to hear just that connection honestly guys it's special it and really it, is and special and like there's some people like uh light is we've mentioned quite a few times one of my best friends uh we had a big heart to heart talk about that. This is years ago now where he felt like he wasn't wanted and not just like with us, but just in general, he didn't have a place. And I was like, what are you talking about? If you were to like move back to Arizona, I'd be happy for you, but I also be crushed because I wouldn't be able to see you. And that's one of those relationships. There have been times I've wanted to strangle him. There have been times I've wanted to like, you know, back over him with my car. We've gotten into those types <laughs> of arguments. But through everything, I will have his back. I would oh, yeah. put for him in a heartbeat. I owe him a lot of things. Just, you know, his stream. Our, the stream would not be here without him. And that is uh, invaluable right he, there. He was also the one that was like, hey, we got to up the quality. So as a an very early Christmas gift and investment in the stream, he bought the first camera and that Yeti mic that David's yeah, that using right now. Upgraded camera. Also. Nice. First upgraded camera, not the one because the one we we're using was trash. Yeah, even the RPG I'm making, he is in no way, shape or form like yeah, one second like, program. you're good he is in no way shape or form at a point where he's like oh hey i'm going to help you make it or i'm investing in this he's like hey i got rpg maker as well the software i'm using and he's like oh for the record uh you could do this this and this i was experimenting i'm like oh are you making a game no just there to help help me and i'm like hey i need ideas for this character uh what class should they be what perks should they have what should i do this so let me think about it and then the next day he will send me options full detail things that like yeah. here's things you could do i'm like dude and for no <laughs> other reason but just to help and that type of relationship is huge and the fact that i have that in my life from multiple different avenues means the world to me i have my wife i have my brother i have you know light over there all these different facets you know my love, my brother, my friends. And that is like that trinity right there that holds it together. And I'm, I'm actually going to drop a little bit of knowledge on you. There's a, if you get some downtime, there is a, uh, a motivational speaker who's also a phenomenal magician, absolutely phenomenal. His name is Vin Zhang, uh, V-I-N-H. And I'll happily post the link in Discord. It's actually in one okay. of my Discord magic sections. And he does this uh, good, like, 30-minute long, 40-minute long uh, seminar, motivational speech. And he talks about different things of improving yourself, and he includes magic, and it's wickedly cool how he does it. But one thing he talks about, and I hold this very personal, think of the five people in your life that you associate the most with, that you spend the most time with. Uh, and that can be your wife, that can be your friends. The five people, those five have the biggest impact on shaping who you are as an individual. Very true. And so what are your goals and do those five help you with it? Because if any of those five people, if you were to tell them, Zeph, I want to, I want to quit my job and I want to be a full-time content creator. If any of those five were to tell you, don't do that, that's the worst decision you've ever made in your life, you need to stick to a job. In fact, you need to ask your boss for a promotion right now because you thought of that you don't need those as one of your top five. You don't need um, that. You need hear me out. Now, if any of those five were to say, okay, have you thought about this from a logical standpoint financially? Have you thought about it from this? Have you looked at the outcomes? Yes, you have. I support you then. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I, you need. I was, uh, because again, I listen to like those motivational speeches all the time, but it's the concept of you need to surround yourself with two types of people people who inspire you or they either inspire you it's like i want to be like them i want to be successful like them fit like them they like they motivate you or people who lift you up and try to help you towards your goals so it's like oh my god uh for me it was like you want to be a firefighter 
that's awesome. How can I help? Or, hey, you know, if you need any support, let me know. And it's kind of hard to cut people out of your life who do not do that. Instead, try to drag you down because they themselves are not motivated or they are spiraling down a bad path. And that's the the, the term that's always thrown around is toxic. Um, but if it is a toxic relationship, people tend to hold on because they think there's value with the time they've been friends. It's like, we've been friends since high school. I need to stay friends with this person. Oh, it's yeah. like, sure, they're dragging me down. Sure, they're not supporting. Sure, they're leeching off me or mooching off me or whatever. It's like, it's okay to Sever cut people out time. of your life. Yeah, and it, it's sunk really cost. hard to do that. What's up, Dave? The sunk cost fallacy is- Yeah, uh, sunken cost yeah. fallacy. Yeah, where people, it's almost the same with- the time you put in. Yeah, there's so much time and money into this and so much energy or effort and this i need to see it through till the very very end same as the people who like go to the movies and it's a terrible movie like half yes. an hour in but they're like we gotta finish it because we paid 30 dollars for these tickets what's more valuable your time and your mental health walk out uh, we the the crew that i work with we play a lot of poker together i uh, oh, and i i had to teach a couple of them that concept actually of this sunken cost fallacy because it'd be like great you know first buy-in is 50 cents cool 50 cents and somebody raises a dollar it's like all right i'm in for a dollar and then they raise another dollar and it's like well i have a losing hand but i'm already in for a dollar i might right. as well it's like that's the sunken cost fallacy it's like just because you're already in for a little bit don't dig yourself deeper if you don't have to and yeah in regards to friendships like if and relationships and even ties with family if they're not benefiting you and in fact they're pulling you backwards it's okay to sever that tie it's not easy and i acknowledge it's not easy i've had to do it several times um but in the end uh you come out feeling refreshed and actually like i know i quickly joked and quipped about uh trolls in chat but it's almost the same thing because or a similar concept when you're starting out and you don't have anybody chatting and then you get a troll in your chat it's like there's somebody talking and sure they're being jerks but it's somebody talking and it's an extra viewer and what you don't realize is that somebody else is going to pop in and see that there's just a jerk in chat and they're they like oh, I don't exactly and they don't want to deal with this and all of a sudden you're actually losing viewership and potential long-term viewership because you're willing to tolerate somebody that's talking even though they're not clearly not benefiting you so it's same concept you know what you're not doing me any good sure i don't have any other chatters but just ban them don't deal with it it's not worth it yeah i mean that's the best thing like i'd, I'd say for anybody like if, if there's ever a troll or just anybody who's just really aggressive or just I feel like there's some ground rules to have and, you know, kind of like second chances can be given for certain things. But if somebody just completely oversteps the bound, like there's going to be more viewers, there's going to be better people that pop in down the road, just ban them, move mm -hmm. on. Don't think twice about it because like you, you are the culmination of what your stream is. And if people, if regulars are there and they just see a bunch of whatever is being chatted about whatever is being said and that they could feel uncomfortable they could leave and you could lose one person could turn off 10 more people and it's just a mm -hmm. domino effect for sure that's true <laughs> um so i know we're kind of running a little bit late on time so i just have a couple more questions okay. i want to ask oh, you guys I Ask Go away. I've, as ask I said, I've, 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 got, I've, got, I've got all night. I'm just going to edit a YouTube video after this <laughs> just for tomorrow because I kind of forgot about it. No, actually, so, uh, on that, I did want to ask about YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> your YouTube content is really, uh, really cool. It's like stories and like firefighter tales and stuff. <laughs> um, do hmm. you have more original content for YouTube or any other creative projects outside of YouTube, <laughs> like TikTok or anything oh. else creative wise, the two of you are working? on i know we talked a little bit about the game david but anything else well yeah but that's not really to promote our stream that is More all like a my fun thing. brother yeah that yeah that's just a fun little side hobby honestly my brother is 
Remember when I was talking earlier about like pulling the stream on his back Creative and I mastermind. Just, yeah, that's all him. Like I, my free time outside of work and streaming is excruciatingly limited family uh, because of my family. Um, and uh, to me, it's worth it. But my brother, he is the one that's like pumping out amazing YouTube content. He's got TikTok. He's got Instagram. And me, I'm like, I'm old. I don't know if I want to do that. And I really need to just, <laughs> I really need to just do it. I, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, for me, it's that like people on stream kept telling me, it's like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. I'm like, no, I don't want to. And I, it was like kicking and screaming. And finally, I was like, cool, uh, I'll put this dumb video up from the stream. And it was like, cool, it, it got 500 likes and 3,000 views and this many comments. I'm like, TikTok. This is something. And, and then after that, it kind of tapered down a lot. I'm like, All right, I've got to figure out the algorithm for TikTok and what, what works. Oh. But like, same with instagram youtube for because my free time is also limited because i i keep myself extremely busy i you know i'm trying to work out i i do a lot of stuff for work i try to do a lot of stuff for the stream outside the stream um so the stuff i put up on youtube as you've noticed is i try to plan streaming ideas that i can put up and that's where like the the covid vaccine tier list came from i'm like this is educational and it'd make funny youtube content or i'll tell a really cool story on stream like that'd be good for youtube this next one that's going up is just going to be because D, &D got canceled for us dungeons and dragons and i was like hey guys because the players i was talking to it's all how would you make this obscure and i picked we started with vincent from final fantasy 7 i'm like hey could you make vincent and D, &D? and wobbles and lewis and light roll well, what are his traits? Okay, so he's a gunslinger, but he can also transform into a monster. We'll settle on werewolf. Okay, cool. Uh, you could do that with this. Well, what about this? And all of a sudden, we just started brainstorming and looking up feats and levels and classes. I'm like, the this hair. is Don't forget content. The hair. <laughs> the hair. Yeah, oh, One other and thing I want to So add. that that's oh, like ahead, the con I was gonna say that's the content for tomorrow. I'm like, can you make Vincent in Dungeons and Dragons? Boom, YouTube content. And now all of a sudden, with that one video, it's like we also did SWAT cats. We also did this. So yeah. like that's that's the it stuff I try serious. to do. There's one thing that we started. We've made a uh, we did a, a special stream and made a YouTube video, and this was going to be like we are doing this, and then COVID I still happened. Want to. We, I know, I'm getting there, and then COVID happened, and that really put a damper on us sitting next to each other because he's a first responder, and I have a newborn, uh, or newborn on the way at that point, or baby on the way was uh and we're going to get back into it here soon uh a series that we're going to call or that we called zero expertise where the first one was for stuntmen and stunt doubles where we watch videos of amazing scenes with stuntmen performing in it and we break down everything they're doing and all these tiny details but we actually have no knowledge on the subjects like or very minimal knowledge so but we're we, just making it up yeah, as we go so we pretend to... that we're experts and we're like yeah that guy was actually stabbed in that scene they forgot to swap out you could tell by this this and this stuff like that so our plan is to continue that with other things not just of course stunt work but uh other yeah, things I, TV I, and I got the idea because I, I love going on youtube and seeing experts break down scenes yeah. like oh, yeah. this is a military sniper and he's breaking down all these movie scenes i know and that, they're exactly or not. Seen that. that video jocko yeah, I, the jocko, jocko. dude shout Wait, out to was jocko. That jocko? I, I don't i don't know if it was jocko but i have seen jocko do <laughs> one like navy seals the reason I bring that up is because uh, some of the guys I work with at the station love Jocko. And so they will actually do like almost like classroom breakdown sessions because they'll read a chapter of one of his books a week and go to work and be like, cool, I liked it for this, 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 this. <laughs> oh, so when we, when, when we, it, pretty much, yes. And so when we had, uh, they're called PJs, but it's uh, uh, paramedic jumpers, I think mm -hmm. is what it stands for, but guys in the Air Force who are training to jump out of planes into the most crazy situations and they're now being trained as paramedics to scoop up one of their own give them quick first aid and get them out whether it's like they're drowning in the ocean or they're in this crazy thing and it's a very grueling intensive process they tell me it's like oh they start with 120 applicants and seven make it to this phase Jeez. and so the guy and i've it's been like a dozen that i've worked with now because they stay with us for two months to learn to be paramedics mm -hmm. um and the last one we had this guy is just they're always specimen like just muscle bound just freaks of nature who are always so wonderful but in turn because they're air force and our guys are reading jocko 
it's always just like, oh man, if only you were a cool Navy SEAL like Jocko. <laughs> oh, Jocko do this. So I was like, oh my God. It's like, wow, you did okay on that scene, but Jocko would have really done great. <laughs> and oh, so man. like, even That's me, even terrible. though I, even though I haven't read Jocko, we, we, we had that fire where we rescued somebody from the third floor of an apartment building who was about to jump. And in my job, I'm trying to like pull this heavy hose line by myself that's stuck. And our PJ is just staring at the fire like a moth to the flame. And I'm screaming his name. I'm like, Caleb, 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 PJ, get over here. And like, he finally is like, oh, cool. Yeah. It's like, he finally like snapped. Oh God, I'm screaming for his help because there's no other trucks available. And all the other guys are busy trying to save this dude's life. And I've got to deal with the fire. And so he comes and he finally helps me pull out the hose line. And when we're all back at the station, we're high-fiving and we saved a life and we saved the building. And oh my God, this is so good. And like, I got a coin for it and it's so cool. And uh, they were just like, yeah, Kyle, so how did you pull the hose line? I'm like, well, it took a little bit, but I got the PJ to help me. And I'm just saying, if Jocko was there, he would have helped me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know it's all a good fun, but part of me is like, ow. Oh, we, we like the banter of a fire station is like no other because we find the best ways to cut each other as deep as possible <laughs> without being spiteful. It's like, ooh. Those are good this, friends, though. Those are the those best are friends. Good. Those are the people that you, yo, you ride into battle with happily. Yes. Oh, yes. no. I, like we, there's, there's one guy, Tommy. We went golfing earlier today at my station and uh, we had to break up the groups. But this one, he is a phenomenal golfer. And my lieutenant, who I was riding with and playing with, like the two of them had a bet for who would do better. And so it was like, man, they're both playing the best golf of their lives right now. So what did I do? Because I'm riding my lieutenant. So he's my teammate for the day. I was hassling the other guy. I went full happy Gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say it. Don't worry. And so like, yes. and he got... Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't know. I didn't know the 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 limits. The PG and so, level. <laughs> exactly. You're good. And You're good. We uh. Yeah. And so like I saw him playing and he missed a putt and I was like, oh, Dylan had to stop his putt and he got so mad and I just see his club hitting the <laughs> oh, ground no. and oh, I was no, I was the golf. I, oh, he raged hard because <laughs> in any sport I know how to get in his head and I just was poking the bear and finally I step up. I step up for my to tee off and I'd been playing pretty well and all of a sudden it's like okay okay guys okay the star athlete is about to tee off come on Kyle show us what you got no pressure <laughs> you know what you're doing let's go come on and I'm laughing because he's so mad and I shank it it was bad my worst <laughs> hit of the day and he's just like oh my god I guess you know how to talk huh keep to your own golf and so I turn around and say Oh, I'm sorry. I learned how to golf from my dad. <laughs> and for those oh. who don't know their list is my brother and I don't know our dad and we love to crack jokes about it. Yeah. So my whole crew is now in on the joke and they start laughing, which makes him even more mad because I don't care <laughs> that I'm not playing well. And I retort with that to which David, you know, Rob. Yeah. Uh, we're getting in the, we're getting in the car. It's another firefighter. He's like, Hey Kyle, what's, what's one plus one. I'm all, Two, he's like, no, it's one more parent that you didn't have, or more, oh. yeah, one more parent that you didn't have. Oh, I was like, God. and That's he says this while that. Tommy is about to tee off, and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like we we know it, and, and afterwards, what happened when I'm like, this this monster is gonna meet me at the last hole and like break his club over my head. He comes up, hugs me, says, I don't know why I got mad. You played amazing golf. I'm like, ah. Yep. I got yes. him. Yes. Got all right. him. Right. Um, all right. All right. For a second time, <laughs> questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um oh. so here's here's a good one. I, I think you guys would like. If you could <laughs> both time travel and go in the past and tell cool. your day one streaming self one solid piece of streaming advice, what would you say? All right. I'm going to do us a favor and I'm going to veto improve the stream quality and improve the background i'm sorry sure, sure. i'm gonna i'm gonna that's, knock out the too easy. easy same with the networking let's get rid of the let's get rid of the softball underhand i know i know exactly easy. what i'm gonna say too let's hear it let's hear it I, I think yours might be similar so the first time we streamed we didn't know our streaming voices and oh, it was very forced and so light would one. watch our streams and listen and be like why do you sound like so 
oh guys we're going to be doing this today Ooh, and like yeah. it just the the force Damn, nature of it yeah so i would just go back and be like hey pretend like you're at a smash bros tournament and you're talking with players how do you act and it's just fun and hyper and laughing and joking and so i'd be like don't try to be something you're not just laugh one thing so i'll even say on that is a lot of people don't realize um a lot of those beginning streams when you have zero viewers watching those are actually the best times to experiment and to try yes. different things and to like really reflect on ways you can improve your stream. Cause like yeah. if you want to try something really weird and really out there and like, you don't like, if you have a big base of people, it could off put some of them and you know, yeah. they might not come back. But like, if you have zero people watching experiment, go crazy, like yeah. just do anything that comes to mind. Cause that's your one time you can truly be, try a ton of different things and nobody's going to be there to care yeah you're i'm so right kind of funny enough with that is uh i remember early on in the streams i would honestly i didn't mind dropping profanity i would say swear words i don't care i know my brother still doesn't it's fine but i, I remember, try not to now yeah. well especially now that i have a kid i'm much PG more it a bit yeah, oh, oh god i i went full-blown it's obvious i'm a parent but even <laughs> before, um i remember there was one specific moment that I, I I can't remember. I, I dropped a few profanity words, and not like out of anger, just like randomly throwing them in. Yeah. And somebody who was in there is all, yeah, hey, sorry, I enjoy the stream, but you know, I don't really enjoy swearing, so I, I'm going to go now. And I'm like, ouch, that's fair. And that was early on enough that I'm like, you know what? I don't need to swear. And so I, I every now and then something will still come out, but it's not like you know. F you this, know, I, F that, F this. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I, I made it a, a note to like, you know, be more careful. And that was in that early, you know, hey, you can do that. My piece of advice I would give to myself or give to us early on is it's okay. Have fun. You don't have to stick to one game because we found ourselves at one point very much in the, the Kaizo Mario, like, okay, well, we're growing because of this and that peaks and valleys thing come back. If we leave this, we're going to lose all these people. It's okay. Play what you have fun playing. You know, one thing. one thing I've really noticed a lot with that is I feel like there's kind of what we talked about a little bit earlier, how there's some like professional elite superstar players like Shroud who can just like kill it at first person shooter games. But I feel like if you're not that person and if you're on the other side, like the more personality type of streamer, a lot of times what people seem or a lot of times what you'll realize as a streamer is if you're playing like Final Fantasy over here and then you switch over to like Minecraft, sure, some people won't follow over, but if they're there, if they're there for the stream to see you and they care mm -hmm. about you and they care about the community, they care about chat, they care about the whole experience and the game is just the background noise, they won't care what you're playing. So play whatever exactly. you want and be happy and the community will follow you if they're really oh, so there I, for you. I, I, I do. I'm going to cut you off. I'm sorry. Really, really quick. Uh, EE Visu, a very big partnered uh, Twitch streamer that we actually know from Smash Bros. I asked him that at a tournament, like, yeah, what advice do you have for us? Because we're still, we're, we're new at that point. So sorry. He said, know what you're good at and just stick with that. Like, not, not like you're stuck there, but know what you're good at and run with it. Because he said, he's all, I am not good at playing games. I'm not good at all. What I am good at is commentary. And that's what he's known for in the Smash scene is his, he's amazing at commentary. And that's what his stream is. He does commentary, whether he's doing commentary over his own games that he's playing right then and there. He'll watch TV shows uh, like Bar Rescue and stuff, and he'll do commentary about it. That is his market. It's okay to know your market. It's perfectly fine. Our market is not us being phenomenal at video games, not even close. Our market's actually kind of more us being bad at video games and having fun doing it. And that's I, uh, yeah. I was going to say, I, I do want to kind of like put little addendums on a few things. Um, I would also say, you know, if you're going to be a variety streamer, understand like, like when I was playing Celeste, my viewership was skyrocketing. The Celeste community came in in droves. Mm -hmm. They loved it. They they wanted to see me try to speed run it. They liked to see my first playthrough. I had partnered Celeste runners raiding me. But understand that if you're going to be a variety streamer, like you said, you've got to 
people are going to stick around for you. So you're going to have those high highs, low lows when you swap games, and it's going to lead to slower growth. Had I stayed with Celeste or we stayed with Kaizo Mario, we'd probably be really, really big right now, but we couldn't bigger. sleep bigger, bigger. Yeah, yeah thank you. Let's Not really big. Not, let's let's knock ourselves down a bit. Yeah, yeah. sorry, bit bigger. You, you know what I mean? Um, but we wouldn't be able to swap off those games. So understand that as a variety streamer, it's slower growth. And I think you have to work a little harder at making good content mm -hmm. because you need to give people a reason to come back. Yeah. Uh, oh, that right. haven't been said. Oh. They have to like you. Yes. Uh, that haven't been said though, play what you want. Just understand that certain games will make it nearly impossible to be discovered. Yes. I yes, like playing yes. Fortnite. Yes. So yeah, if you're playing Fortnite or Call of Duty, understand that there's thousands and thousands of others and you are so far down on that list that nobody's going to find a one oh, or two viewer person. Point. And uh, uh, so, yeah. So when I, when I go to play a new game, that's one of the first things I do is I see how saturated it is. It's like, I knew going into the Resident Evil series, I'm probably not going to get several new viewers, but there's not a lot of people playing it. And it's like, cool, there's a thousand people watching it and there's 20 or 30 streamers and the top ones have like a few hundred, but then there's, it's like, 100 viewers, 75 viewers, and like zero one, zero one, zero one. I'm like, great, here's where I'm going to sit if I play this game, yes. which increases my odds of being found because like too active of a chat, too active of a chat, just active right. enough. That and so- drum right there. Too yeah. Small, too big, just right. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, play what you want, but do under, like do some homework, understand like, I think the Dark Souls series was a great place to start. It has a lot of viewers, but if you're doing your first playthrough, people love to see that. It is an yes. active market. Heck, uh, I, I was in memory just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was saying memory and in, uh, in honor of uh, Chief Opa, you know, um, I played Dark Souls 1 last night and that brought in new viewers despite it not being my first playthrough and not having a if you would a warm and welcoming title despite that because it is a game that people want to watch be played and not a lot of people are playing it they'll come to you so yeah that, that, yeah. that that's my piece of advice pick and choose your games based on saturation and viewership at the same time though if you're playing a game that like yo nobody's really watching like has 10 viewers also not probably the best you got to find I, that that I, good. I, Yes, I, I hate to yes. throw this one out there because I'm not trying to like throw shade or throw you under the bus because oh, yeah. I like what you're doing. RPG Maker, to my brother, RPG Maker is an example. It has no viewership. But the benefit to that is that you're doing something special for our stream with that. It's so it's, it's that they come together. Exactly. And so those who so, are there are hooked and it helps build those bonds more. Exactly. So that that's like one of those exceptions. But if we were to start with like an RPG Maker stream, it, don't it, expect it, to get viewerships it, if i were yeah. to randomly go play like earthworm gym or something i bet i could look on twitch right now and it'd have next to nothing on there so you could probably expect to get next to no viewership there's, so you need to find that middle ground yeah mm -hmm. there's like because if you're way too high up there if you're like league of legends fortnite csgo stuff like that like it's really about being for, at least i've always thought it's always about being in like that top two to three rows like right when mm -hmm. someone clicks mm -hmm. on i want to watch fortnite those first six you got to imagine like those are the only six they're going to see or eight or whatever like yep. pops up and like i always think like i would don't normally scroll down very much so whatever is in that very top is what i'm going to pick and so yeah if, if you're there's like probably 500 views to like 2000 views kind of in that range is the sweet spot mm -hmm. for a lot of people because the first yeah. one's always going to be 100 200 viewers you know viewers yeah. and then kind of like 75 and then like 30 and then 28 mm -hmm. 25 and you can kind of like you know if i stream this with 20 viewers i'd be in that top six top eight so if somebody was coming to see like legend of zelda ocarina of time or whatever and i'm 20 and they're kind of sitting right there there's a good chance they they pick out my yeah, channel so exactly. it's like it's like the game is like that middle point that brings people together yeah, and they know they can talk with you and you would respond because you're not your chat isn't going to be going wild mm -hmm. but at the same time people are interested in watching it, you it, yes i think like actually 
I was explaining this to the, the firefighters I work with because they asked some good questions and I was explaining like there's a lot of plateaus with streaming and I feel like getting those first couple viewers, like getting the three, four, five, what is it for affiliate? Is it six viewers or three? I think it's three. three. It is three. Okay, I thought so. Getting those initial three viewers is actually hard and I feel like when you do that, it's like climbing or clearing the first wall, the first obstacle. And to me, I feel like getting to about 20 average was the next big like hurdle. obstacle yeah the next big hurdle to reach uh and it feels at that point like when you are that you know one of the top six playing that particular game it feels like you have uh not accreditation but well i guess accreditation like you're you have value to your stream people find value so there's reason to watch you because you have 20 other viewers, but you're not oversaturated so they can actually get a conversation. In. And so I think like 20, 30, 40 viewers is appealing to a lot of people because if you're streaming to zero or one, which is why I think that was the hardest point of streaming for us, like if you're streaming to zero or one, it's like, ah, there's a reason why they're not streaming to people. Oh, he's streaming to 20. There is a reason to watch him. So kind I feel cool. like, yeah, that first three is a big hurdle, then getting to 20 is like the next big hurdle, I thought. And then after that, it just keeps, you know, that number keeps climbing for yourself, depending on what your goals are. It kind of makes me laugh. A little thing is when we we're playing Terraria, and one of the reasons I want to go back to us playing that, bro, is one, I love the game, but it's one of my favorites. But there were several times that we were in that top three to top five, and there's like two, three, four, five thousand people watching Terraria. And yet we were still in that top of like 30, 40 viewers in that top level. And of course there's like, yo, a thousand here, a hundred here, and then there's us. And I'm like, man, we are right in that sweet spot. I'm loving this right here. And then yeah, we should play it. Yeah. We really should tomorrow. I know you said not to. No. You're fine. I'm kidding. Um, that's been a big that's thing right. I've, I've found with like the Soulsborne games is like all of the Soulsborne games, like there's always like the communities are all active for all of them. And people love to see like first playthroughs and first playthroughs oh. anybody can do. Like if you haven't played the game before, play, go in blind, go in not knowing yep. anything. And people just love to see it. And finding games like that, like I know Final Fantasy series is another big one. Um, but just yeah, trying I to play through it, just trying to find those series that people really enjoy, like first playthroughs of, and that have multiple games after like kingdom hearts is another one. Um, people like there is really a fan base on Twitch for people seeing those first playthroughs. Cause, cause you're like reliving that experience with a friend, you know, you're like, I love bloodborne so much. And I want to see this cool person play it and like witness the, the, the holy crap moments with me again. Do, yeah, the, do you know what's actually kind of funny with that? That makes me think of, I mean, it happened one with Celeste because this speedrunning community came out in droves just to watch a first playthrough. But uh, when we were still like in that kind of learning phase, one day I was like random time of stream, small numbers. I'm like, I'm going to play Mega Man X because I've never played it before. And I had got at the time for me insane viewership and like the top, like some of the top speedrunners in the world were in there and everybody was like no tips no hints no hints no hints mm. because they love seeing the organic playthrough of like the discovery the awe that they don't get to experience because they right. beat the game thousands of times now and exactly. so pe people right. love seeing that people i like seeing it like people playing through dark souls I'm all, oh my god we're almost at this boss which wrecked me that was like me with uh oh that was like you and ludwig jerk <laughs> See, but those games are extra fun too, because like a boss that like <laughs> killed you 20 times, somebody else can go in and like first try it. And then yeah. vice versa, like you defeated a boss super easy one or two tries. And like, I had so many people telling me like, why are you struggling with the burrito so much? Like, I, like everyone was saying they took down a burrito so much and it took me like 20 or 30 tries. I'm like, I don't know why it's like in my head now. I'm like lost in my head about it, but no that's never, that's that's so true so. um I, I feel that too with like Mar what is it mario 64 and ocarina of time every mm -hmm. time you go on twitch and look up those two games everything is speed running like there's nobody actually just playing the game to play the game so when mm -hmm. somebody is actually like i've never played ocarina of time let's experience it for the first time everyone is like the like sitting there with their popcorn so excited it's actually true. that gives that gives me ideas i should play i've never actually played majora's mask and I've never beat, I've started, but didn't get very far in Final Fantasy VI. Oh, so man. I think I should, 
I should add those to the list. You should. I've I've played Majora's Mask, but it was a long time ago, and I barely remember any of it. I played through six, but same thing. It was a ways back, and I don't remember. I just remember how much I loved Kefka. God, I love Kefka. Kefka's great. But continue on. And you know, we're about three hours in right now. Uh, now it is <laughs> a little bit late, okay. but I do want to because I'm intrigued as to what other questions you have. Yeah, so, no, ask away. I love uh, this. I'll kind of wrap up with like the final few that I have. Um, I will we'll shorten our answers a bit too. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, is there any new streamers or content creators that you have started watching recently that has kind of re-inspired you at all? Ooh. Yeah. So when you say new streamer, do you mean like, like see they're them brand new or like new? I just found them. Either or, either or. So like new in your that, life, that, I'd say. I, I, uh, so there's one that I just found this week and it was one of those, like it appeared on my Twitch front page as like, you might like this. And it turns out it's because, uh, uh, hand off the bay is very active in her chat. Um, and she goes by Sweetheart Alley. Yes, I love Alley. Okay, thank you. And it was one of those, Ma- like, I think she's playing Majora's Mask. She right is. Now. <laughs> she is. And so here's the thing. I yeah, she was still like most of the time. It's like Majora's Mask, but it's like three hours of just chatting because yes. she acknowledges everyone despite her chat being booming and active. And oh my God, her have you been in her Discord? Yes, yes. it's popping. I. I need to go in there apparently. Oh my God. I can't keep up. And I have to actually go onto my discord at mentions just to find anything. That's like, Oh, this was like 50 messages ago. But anyways, I, I saw it on there. And what drew me was that she had, I, uh, you are loved at the top and you are not alone at the bottom. I was like, you're not alone. That's what we called our suicide prevention fundraiser. And I liked it. And I went in and the energy she brought made me feel like a sloth because I try to be high energy and loving. And I was like, oh my God, she is go, 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 shotgun or monster, but like not in a a bad way. So seeing her and then seeing like how loving her community is and awesome. And uh, it was one of those like, oh no, I I haven't. I, I was talking in her Discord uh, this last uh, shift that I was on, and we had a pretty, pretty like kind of rough call that we went on. And like I had gone back and I was laying in bed, couldn't sleep, popped in her Discord, people are chatting. And I posted a message in there like, hey, just do me a favor, like reach out to a loved one you haven't talked to in a while and just tell them, like, hey, I love you. You know, you, you never know. And that day I'd seen a lot of regret from a lot of patients' families. And so it was just kind of like a thought. I realized right when I hit send, I'm like, oh, that sounds so like bad and emotional. And I'm trying to be like positive and I'm new to this community. They don't know me. And I come out here with this and immediately some of them privately messaged me and were like, hey, thank you for that message. Are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm good. And like just seeing that really inspired me to be like, cool this is like a level I know that we can reach and our community can reach. So like that, that's immediately the first one that comes to mind is uh, her. Take love for Sweetheart Alley. I had to cheat on mine. I had to pull up Twitch on my phone. I'm like, oh man, let's go through. And then one name popped up that I immediately, I'm like, well, I found my answer instantly. Like just boom, P Mel. P Mel, yes. P Mel's wonderful. He is wonderful. I watch his stream just to listen to him talk. He has just, that he soft has that voice. voice. He, yeah. he rated me and I, I felt bad because I, I I meant it in like the most endearing way possible. But I was like, you guys are coming from p chat and he talks like this. And then you're coming to this stream. And then I took a big step back and I was screaming and jumping. I'm like, so I'm sorry. There's a slight turn it up to 11. <laughs> Pmel, uh, Sh- Shadow Fury is another new one. Yes, but, love Shadow. Those like watching those streams, I'm like, man, this is this is that step. Like this is like they have that community love, and I, I don't get wrong, I love our community. I feel like we have that too. I just love seeing others who also have that. I'm like, yeah, our community can get bigger. It, it's kind they of funny. T- it's kind of funny too, like how many of these communities I'm finding are like intertwined. I was just gonna say that. It, they all like mesh together or overlap a little bit. 
Yeah, it's and it's kind of cool. Like you could look at it like, uh, what is it like the old bubble, like flow charts kind of thing? Like they're connected, they're connected. They're, and like just yeah, yeah, seeing yeah. how everybody's like, oh, they're all a part of this community, but they aren't despite all these degrees of separation. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just really, really cool because to me, it's like one of those, you can all grow together. There's something we can all bring for each other to, to help I out like without it being like a, a leeching I kind of thing. I was gonna say uh, symbiotic growth. It doesn't have to be uh, me versus you. Like for my stream to grow, yours has to suffer. No, there's the mutual understanding, mutual growth, mutual love that can happen, and I I think that's mm -hmm. amazing. I like good question. I like talking to people who who understand that Twitch doesn't have to be like a competition in the sense like mm -hmm. um, taking away from you to make mine bigger mentality versus instead like let's just all make Twitch bigger and better together and then instead of your slice of the pie getting less and mine getting bigger all of our slices grow bigger together so i like uh, that do, do you know what's funny i, I think of uh i i've started recently trying to watch bigger streamers who have like the 10 20 000 viewers to see like what do they do that maybe it's it's something different there's there's the ones that i'll never be able to emulate because like they have a a lock in on a very unique market it's just not my brand no hot but, tub streams for you hot oh i know right <laughs> uh shirtless fitness streams no um and i, I mean like your ex i mean like your xqc whose brand mm. is like actually like the the kind of like low quality um <laughs> talking crap kind of stuff while being really good at games no but instead like ludwig i respect the hell out of ludwig ludwig he makes phenomenal content and I was in one of his streams and somebody had like asked him the question uh, or they said, wow, you got really lucky with your growth. And he just like made some offhand comment, clearly joking like, yeah, I grew completely with luck. Uh, it's not not through, exactly. Yeah. He said, Insane I never, work. exactly. Mm -hmm. He's like, I never focused on content or networking with others or uh, collaborating with other streamers. Um, I think yeah, one so, of the coolest things about Lud so it, Ludwig is he literally was like a zero person streamer like three years ago. Like he, he had yeah. like for some people zero to three years, you know, they might like hit partner. He's gone to be the number one biggest streamer in the entire world yeah. in like three years. I, and and the, uh, the, the, the takeaway I was going to say, sorry, David, was that, you know, obviously good content, good content, good content, but he pointed out collaborating with other streamers. And I realized a lot of his growth, if you go back, it was like, he was already big when Among Us was coming out, but like all of a sudden he's playing with these people who had 10, 20,000 viewers, and now they're exposed to Ludwig. So a lot of them want to be like, oh, Toast isn't streaming. Uh, Most Critical is not streaming. Ludwig is though, and they had exposures. So. Yeah, it's not a competition of like, you fail, I succeed. It's like, hey, we can introduce our viewers together through collaborations, and now we both grow because we stream at separate times. The only thing I'll add to that is, because um, Ludwig's actually even talked about this before. He made a whole like Twitch stream slash YouTube video on like his advice for growing on Twitch. Uh, oh, I um, watched that live, I yeah, remember. And one of, the, one of the points that he made that I loved was like, if you do cross pollinate, I think is the term you use, cross pollinate your audiences with one another, you need to make sure when those people come over to your stream that your quality is up to par and your content mm -hmm. is up to par. Because if you have, there's there's tons of, there's examples of people with 10,000 viewers, you know, playing games with people with like 50 viewers and they constantly keep giving them this, um, like this limelight day after day and their viewership doesn't grow. The 50 viewership doesn't grow because they don't have the content or the quality mm -hmm. to upkeep with that. So yes, like hundred percent collaboration is super important, but make sure it's like two, two wheels. You got to make sure you're growing mm -hmm. and you got to make sure the collaboration's growing. I, uh, sorry, you know David, funny sorry. Too, like we, 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 we had mentioned earlier about our stream when we got like that thousand person raid. Oh, I'm going to cut off my brother because he cut me off all day. <laughs> no, I, I, but like we had that thousand person raid and prior to that, like a 700 person raid early on, we didn't have the content for that kind of viewership. If I, I would feel blessed right now to get a thousand person raid and I feel like I'd have enough content for like a spontaneous that I'd I'd be better equipped to handle it now than I did then. 
but it's because yeah. I already have like planned content around what to do yeah. if that occurs. Yeah, Sorry. as opposed to and where's this job? All I was gonna say is the fun fact that I remember reading was uh when Ninja hit the uh the top subscription mark, the like two hundred and insane thousand subscribers, Ludwig's average viewership was eight. When that happened, when Ninja hit the record, Ludwig was average streaming to eight people. Jeez. And now look at him, but he it takes effort it takes work i like that question though that was it i am good i would say for a lot of people too like people listening to this that do want to grow if there is what usually i've always been an advocate like if you want to grow you should look at people three to five times your size larger because i think a big mistake a lot of people make is you know a lot of these zero to five viewer streamers is they're watching people like xqc or ninja playing super Dark. shroud playing really good games not interacting with chat at all just playing games and they can do that because their chat's flowing so fast they're a professional they've been doing this for a decade they they have name yep. recognition but like you know we when you first start out you got to cultivate and and really be there for that that community and that relationship with each person that pops in so i think having that like three to five times viewer mentality like if you're averaging 20 viewers maybe look at somebody averaging like 60 viewers or 80 viewers and be I like really like that versus that like is, if you have like no 20 strength. and then looking at someone with a thousand they're in a totally different ballpark they're in a different their community's way bigger maybe eventually you'll kind of look at that but like if you're averaging like 20 viewers look at the people who are like just hit partner you know, we're 70 mm -hmm. viewers, 80 viewers, like what are they doing? And it's like the climb up that mountain is a lot more manageable than climbing Mount Everest when you've never climbed a mountain before, you know? I like that. I mean, I'm over here like, uh-huh. Well, it, it's kind of funny too, because like I never thought about it like that, but I found myself recently, since I'm wanting to network more to grow the channel, I'm like, okay, we're kind of tapering off in our growth. Let's see what we can do to launch it. And so I've been finding those streamers that are, 60, 70, 80, 100 viewers. Um, Ali is an example of that. And so it's like, cool, I have 50 people. Uh, I saw this person on TikTok that looks like they have a good community, good content. Let's see if rating them can introduce. And if it doesn't work, there's always a later one. And it's like, try to learn and grow from people. Like you said, about that three to five times the size of what we have right now. And it's, it's a concept that I've, now discovered but didn't Could know put it in a, yeah. put it in a word so it's actually really really cool to hear that it's like kind of fascinating i because uh, there's also the sense oh. of like because if you if you're gonna just rating is a really easy example it's like some it's just really easy mm -hmm. kind of term to use but like if you're gonna rate somebody and you have like 20 viewers as an example if you read set rate somebody with like 500 viewers it's not gonna mean that much per yeah, se drop in a bucket exactly exactly whereas if you have 20 and you rate somebody else that has like 40 that you just like matt like got a huge boost to them and they're mm. still like within your kind of realm that you know you could network exactly with. and like it's kind of like if like a podcast is an example if i ask somebody like ludwig to be on the podcast he'd be like this is obviously way more benefit for you, Zeph, than it is for me. Like, what do I gain out of this? But, you mm -hmm. know, whereas like all, like us, we're kind of like similar viewership. So um, it kind of like makes a little bit more sense to collaborate a little bit more. We're kind of getting like equal cross pollination, if you will. Yes, I understand what you're getting at. Yeah, I like it. I um, like it a lot. So two more questions. Well, quick couple yeah, questions I have before we kind of wrap everything up. Hey. Um, what is a question I missed during this podcast that you would have asked yourself? Anything firefighter related. Oh, Jeez, I, I, you're totally freebie. right. No, low fire. hanging fruit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, to, uh, low hanging uh, or not low hanging fruit. My go-to one is how long do you want to keep streaming for? I think that's a tough question that not many streamers ask themselves and honestly i haven't even really considered the answer on that one. one i've heard other streamers say yeah i want to do this for five years i have not put a deadline on there but at the same time i'm like man i wonder when that deadline will come do i want to keep doing this until i'm you know 40 years old i don't know almost like that's, that that like passion yeah. 
the passion waves we talked about earlier where you're super passionate about something for like a year or two or three and then maybe maybe streaming just doesn't do it for you in three years kind of thing you know that's that's one that i really like but that's also a very tough personal question yeah i uh it's funny too because like for me i know there's been a lot of streamers that i love that have fallen off because of that they've lost the drive and i my brother will confirm this i always love a good challenge that is attainable um beyond ninja warrior that was one of them become a firefighter that was one of them and so this stream it's like a difficult puzzle that i know i can solve uh and so it's like i haven't lost that drive yet because it's like there's every but day there's a new challenge and so i'm yeah. like what at what point i'm always curious at what point will that drive taper off i'm like if i hit a thousand average viewers i'm like but i can hit ten thousand right. if i hit yeah. ten thousand it's like but i can hit number one of all time so i am kind of curious for me like if and when it will ever taper off i know there is a point everybody has that point i just don't know what mine is yet it's almost like money so, you know it's like at what point are you happy with because some people are happy yeah. with thirty thousand dollars a year to pay the bills and they're happy mm -hmm. other people want 50 other want 100 other want a million so similar kind of thing um all right Question. last last <laughs> well last two questions okay big final one um this one's a pretty important one i like to end all the all the podcasts with what does streaming mean to you a1 twins i've Ooh. got an answer dave if you don't mind uh, no, no, if you if you're okay with it, I'd like to I'd like to swing first go for it streaming Is honestly a way for me to Escape truthfully um, Streaming for me is a way to stay close to my brother Which is a big thing because as we grow up we have different careers. We can't meet up like we used to um, It's a good way for me to stay close to him while also escaping a lot of things in life like you know my work my job the the problems of you know being an adult so stream streaming is a great way for me to just get away from that and just be at ease just relax just enjoy enjoy this moment enjoy this community enjoy the time with my brother uh so that that's my answer all right go nuts Love bro it. yes <laughs> it's like oh great so I mentioned it earlier, streaming for me is like my my recovery from, you know, the, the bad stuff that I do see at work. And I see great stuff at work too, mind you. I like, I don't want to make it sound like it's a downer job. I, I love what I do. Uh, but since David already kind of covered that, it's also for me a way to connect with people all around the world and make friends. So originally it was like people made friends through online video gaming, Xbox Live, and then social media. It's like, I have friends in Sweden and Australia. But for me, I feel like the friendships made through streaming are, are deeper in a way. And I love that because I'm gonna use you for an example. If you randomly hit me up and said, hey, I'm in New Mexico, I'd be like, awesome. I've got a futon right behind me. I've got a couch, we'll figure it out. Uh, like let's hang out i would be so excited because we get to hang out and it feels like we have a friendship that despite never physically meeting i feel like we would you know not a lot would change if we met up in person versus you know this podcast the conversation we're having and so it gives me a chance to just connect with people all around the world and it's i had a project i was working on that i really fell off on and it was going to be anybody who subscribed had the option to tell me where they were from and i was putting pins in the map to see like what kind of outreach we had i sh really should continue that because i liked the idea but it it's a means of seeing like how many people from all across the world can i impact and make smile and influence and you know encourage them to grow and maybe make a difference in somebody's life you know, so. I know that's a real thing because every single person I've had on the podcast so far and other people I've talked to in Discord messages has all said the same exact thing. Like Twitch is different than a lot of other social media platforms because you're constantly seeing your friends every single day or like constantly in your chat asking how their day is, what's new. And you're like, it's almost, it's like a lunch table that's just going yeah. 
you know every single day so um i i absolutely love both of those answers those were great answers um so very last one for the podcast where can all of our viewers and listeners connect with you both online <laughs> so it's easy you, i was gonna say uh T- tape a note to a brick and throw it really hard and we'll get the message <laughs> we'll find it. so uh go was it go into your uh your front yard go to your driveway or go into the street go somewhere like that uh put a bunch of logs and start a fire and my brother will be there <laughs> don't do that <laughs> i'll be there first don't uh, do no, that but, uh, yeah, the easiest way please uh twitch.tv slash a1 underscore twins and twins is spelled normal there's no fancy z on the end or anything else uh, oh the z that would have been so smart twins z twins that would, that'd be the triplet that we lost <laughs> you know the one that ran away and we're like come back for the stream yeah no, twitch.tv uh, backslash a1 underscore twins come hang out we have a wonderful community pretty active yeah. discord uh, and one other thing I really want to add, if you if you've stuck around for the <laughs> three and a half hours now, I mean, uh, assuming that Zeph is tapering it down, uh, please, please, please subscribe to Zeph on YouTube, follow him on Twitch, subscribe to him on Twitch too if you have you know the if you have the opportunity and you have the extra income for it. Prime Gaming. You, yep. You know, drop those Twitch primes on here. <laughs> no, uh, you you're absolutely amazing. You're wonderful, and I'm honored that we've had this chance to just have a yeah. fun and talk with you seriously it's like we were just grabbing a bite to eat grabbing a slice of pizza this has been an absolute blast Mm -hmm. thank you both thank you both seriously for just your time um i'm definitely sorry it went a little bit longer um i actually did have a couple questions about like magic and ninja warrior and stuff like that plan ask away i got time well (laughs) actually i was thinking we could hold it for a second podcast round two um I think that'd be a ton of fun if you guys would like to come on again. Love to absolutely oh, have you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All, all right, everybody. Um, thank you all so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Zephcast. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to smash that beautiful like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more of your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters in the future, consider subscribing. It's absolutely free to do so, and we'll have even more content coming up here soon. Thank you all again so much for watching. Zephyr's XP, A1 Twins. I'll catch you all in the next one. Much love, friends. Love, everyone.